Okay, here's the comps. We'll take some pics. We'll post them. And, uh, hey, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you, okay? A home is life-changing, and your real estate agent should reflect that. Honesty, integrity, and someone who will go above and beyond to make your dreams come true. The Jeff Lyman Group with Compass Realty. We're different because you're different. We want what you want. Experience the difference today at JeffLutman.com, bringing people and properties together. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here right now with James Carlton of the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency. I made the switch to start working with you, James. It couldn't have been easier to make that switch to start saving money. Well, I appreciate that, Tim, and we appreciate your business. Uh, yeah, this is the time to save money. My, my goodness, we're all feeling it at the grocery store, at the gas pump, etc. So if you've noticed that your insurance rate has gone up, I want to stress how easy it is to get a proposal from us by going online at carltoninsurance.net. Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency online at Carlton Insurance. .net. Temperatures are finally warming up here in St. Louis, and while that means more fun in the sun, it could also spell disaster for your lawn. Rain equals spring weeds, and now is the best time to get ahead of it. Green Envy has been here in St. Louis for more than a decade, servicing and treating lawns just like they would their very own. Crabgrass can lay dormant for years until the conditions are right, and the massive amounts of moisture we've had is sure to wake up even the oldest crabgrass seeds. Green Envy only uses products that have been formulated for Missouri soil, weather conditions, and turf types, not national generic products that are insufficient and ineffective. Let the experts at Green Envy help you choose the best treatment program for your lawn this season. Phone lines are open 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and Saturday 9 to 1 to take your calls and answer questions. Call Green Envy today at 636-757-1600 or visit GreenEnvyLawns.com and make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood. The choice of a lawyer is important and shouldn't be based on an ad. After a serious car accident, people have two questions. Why me and what now? Well, no one knows why you, but I'm Terry Crouppen, and my law firm, Brown & Crouppen, sure can help with the what now. Car repairs, medical bills, lost wages, pain and suffering. We're Brown & Crouppen, and we've got all of those answers. All you have to do is call. 222-2222. Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPN TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. Rise and shine, St. Louis. It's the Brown and Crouppen Morning After on KPN TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. At the Morning After STL on YouTube and on TMASTL.com with Tim McKernan, Doug Vaughn, Iggy Strode, The Plowboy, and Action Jackson. 707 in St. Louis, you're listening to The Morning After. It's presented to you. You by Brown and Crouppen. Welcome, friends, to the Munganas St. Louis Acura, Munganas Burkhardt, Alton Toyota. Seven o'clock hour. Timothy Michael McKernan, Douglas Elvin Vaughn, Kenneth Iggy Strode, the Plowhawk, and Action Jackson with you on the program. A program that really wants you to call in today. 636 4 TMA. Callier and Thompson phone lines. 636 4 TMA. Text in to the Jeff Lotman Compass Realty text inbox. 314 881 TMA 5 and email in. The morning after at InsideSTL.com for our design, air, heating, and cooling email today. What a treat we have today, Doug. Is this becoming a real show? I don't think so. Okay. No. Yesterday, Kelly Chase and Barrett Jackman in studio. Well, that was nice. Yeah. Today, The Wizard in studio at approximately 7.50. Ozzy Smith in studio Perfect. at 7.50. Ed Herman in studio in our 8 o'clock hour. There it is. Who and do then, we think we are, anyway? Johnny Carson? It sounds that way with some of these big-name guests that we're getting. But ours has always been the type of show where friends feel they could drop in at any time. That's right. So that's what they're going to be doing. The Wizard's mm -hmm. going to be dropping in at approximately 7.50 at Herman. Dropping in, uh, I think, 8.15 ballpark. And then the design air heating and cooling email of the day before mm -hmm. Jackson and I go down the hallway. And we will deal with it. And Jackson, uh, you're pretty proud of what you have prepared here for uh, Doug today on Balloon Party. What do you got? I'm always proud. What do you have? No, just, you know, another pack of questions. Like what? What do you have? Oh, there's a lot to talk about, Doug. What sort of things are you going to be talking about? Ah, oh, sports. Oh, you got nothing! You got nothing! You're going in again today, Doug? No. No. Okay. Why, were you upset that I went in last <laughs> week? No, I was just curious if you were going in again. We don't know. Well, well then, you don't understand pitching, and that's okay. Can I say that again? I'm, I'm sorry? sorry? I'm sorry. <laughs> Oldie, but a goodie. Yeah, that's, I think that's on my top ten 
Look Nada. at this, look at that. <laughs> Keisha <laughs> Gray and the <laughs> free mm. bills. You were asking mm. a lot of questions. I just thought you were going to be part of it today. You were asking what they were going to talk about. Well, he's just a curious mind. Yeah. 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 Well, it's a six shooter. I'm going to have it listen. <laughs> Six How did that go with Doug? Before I, it, what, I mean, it was. Well, it, it, I, I, my guess is you were like, "Holy crap, we break every twelve minutes." Oh, how do you yeah. so fast? Completely I mean, different. It just, it just, it, it, uh -huh. it flies by. Right. Especially once you get used to the misspelled hatred. Mm -hmm. You go to these <laughs> real stations and they take like commercial breaks and things like that. Now hold on a second. I heard you say real. Well, I'm HD one. And they take real commercial breaks, and you don't just have to talk for an hour and a half without taking a break. You said real again. It does right. make it go by real fast. There's real a third time. <laughs> no, it's it's a it's a fabulous experience. I would suggest well, it for anyone. Well, you had to experience interested. the what did you get? The Thursday this and that or something? It's a like that. Wide Boulevard, somewhere or other. <laughs> oh come on! I was I was playing around. It was obviously a Wide Berth Wednesday. That's what it was. Wide Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad move. Might, might be tomorrow's question bag. <laughs> uh, Nate in Tallahassee said, I used to umpire Ozzy's kids. Please tell him I said hi. Yeah, we'll do that. He <laughs> uh, <we> <laughs> lived by me, you know. <laughs> I bet it'd be really hard to be a, a kid athlete of a Hall of Fame parent. And everyone expects you to be just as good as dad. That would be hard. The one thing you do get is all the technology and training and equipment and, and coaching. Well. Yeah. And coaching. Like, so you do get that. But you only, you, get half, you only get half the genes. And you just hope you get the, the half that produced the athlete. Uh, Plowhawk, wedding tackle's not happy with the skeleton. Do you want to address him? Like Nutsack Jim last week. Watch out! I don't Here comes know. Nutsack Jim! I don't even... <laughs> I don't even have the text line okay. open. Has the skeleton lost most of its bones? I feel like I hear the Prop 60 segment daily. I don't even know. What's, what, what's the Prop 60 segment? I guess I can see the win at last play. That's Julia Ann, right? Julia Ann. <laughs> I mean, can you tell me a time you were listening? Uh, wedding tackle call in. Callier and Thompson. A little more. 636-9004-TMA. <laughs> Well, I do like straight. the term that has the skeleton lost its bones. Uh, one guy writes in. Like, I don't dislike <laughs> one that. One guy writes in about something he heard who knows when, and we have to stop the show to search for it? I just kind of searched up until like midnight. I'm going to call him out if it was like 2 a.m. I heard at some point yesterday, but I was. It's not like how like often I'm, do you listen to the skeleton? Never! <laughs> my my <laughs> only issue with that is like people who turn it on and want to hear a specific segment at yeah. that exact time and then get pissed when it's not on at that exact time they get in their car. Mm. Does that happen? I, it, it has happened. That's okay. why I've had a lot of skeleton rants in the past. <laughs> um, so, like, if you want to hear that segment, just, you know, podcast. They want to keep hearing the Sinbad interview? <laughs> Good interview. Yeah, and it's playing today. Yeah. Any of my interviews make it in there yet? Uh, I haven't yet. We have to. Can, no, that hurt his feelings. I can see you get your dog. And now. I trust Iggy, but I would like Jackson to run that AI program to make sure that there's no cussing or 590. Yeah, no problem. Because I'll never hear the end of it by the listeners. Right. If there's anything wrong, mm -hmm. they that love care of. that sort of thing. Sure. Well, there were Iggy's interviews. Isn't it on you to get the cussing out of it? No, he did his yeah. job. It's all in this. It's all in the folder. It's my dot. My job to get it into the system. So no, there's no cussing. It was. For radio, it wasn't for podcast. No. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I, I, okay. And but who I took, are these interviews with? I took all the 590s out of there, but if you want to check again, that's fine. Who are these interviews with? Just random D-list celebrities. Such as? Doug, I'm going to go to the folder now. Jamie Lynn Siegler, right? Yeah, I think that's in there. Well, That was kind of a cringy interview. Okay. Just like the current segment right now. Barry Pepper, Bo Derek. Oh, Bo Derek Bruce Jenner. Anne Hayes. Yeah. Uh, Debbie Gibson. Dennis Quaid. Mm. Fran Drescher. That kind of those, aren't, those aren't D-listers. Henry Winkler. What? Oh, what the Fonz. What I'd, say the, I'd say those are B-listers. And Johnny Weir and Joan Rivers. Henry Winkler, that's, that's, he's, yeah. he's bordering on. Bo Derek was absolutely A-list in her prime. Ten. Yeah. Julie One of those beautiful Andrews, women. Kate Goss one. That's actually a good movie, too. I hate the Prop 60 discussion, too. 
but it's the sewed with the Vianney dad's calendar email, so mm. it's a necessity. It's from uh -huh. Bottom Drippy. Do you know that, Doug? That, well, it that the Prop no. 60 segment also has the Vianney stepdad's calendar? Didn't know it. Yeah, so Wedding Tackle probably feels like an ass right now, so your <laughs> apology is accepted. Well, it also caught me completely unawares. I didn't know it either. <laughs> I don't like that phrase, caught me unawares. And why is, it, why is there an S on the end of it's Fair unawares. question, fair question. Uh, please don't include his interviews. That's from the Loomster. He was nominated oh. for the Milagro Tequila Lister of the well, Year. Well, we can go back and play Sinbad for you. How about that? I think no, you'll bitch about get that. Feisty. <laughs> I'd like to hear some of those interviews. I want to hear the one with Barry Pepper. We talked 61, but I think he had. Um, Barry. God, what was that movie with Spacey, the political movie? Well, you should have asked in the interview. <laughs> I did. That's what the movie, That's what the interview was about. Oh, but this was done years ago, and you've forgotten something, Jack. That was a fun interview. Okay. Well, I'll listen for that. <laughs> when might I hear it? Plows, are you going to get around to listen to those and upload them anytime soon, or is it just going to sit on the back burner them, forever? I can upload them today. Oh well. How about that? Okay. Well, you the following that. presentation is a Barrett Sports Media production. He's connected. Jason Barrett says, I'd like to see you here. The answer is when, where, what do you need? Respect. I'm sure he said that. Huh? <laughs> Doug, head on over to uh, De Pair and uh, see Craig and David Betts, and then tell them you're a TMA listener, and you get 15% mm -hmm. off. 15% off jewelry at Glenn Betts Jewelers if you are a TMA listener. Craig and David Betts are third and fourth generation of the Betts family. The jewelry store is located on Manchester, about a mile east of the 270 in Manchester exit. Glenn Betts Jewelers, tell them you're a TMA listener, and you get 15% off whatever it is that you're purchasing. So if you're thinking about getting engaged, how can you not go to Glenn Betts Jewelers? Whether it be for engagements, for birthdays, Mother's Day, uh, and here's the deal. What about Just Because? A gift Just Because, especially with 15% off. It's all at Glenn Betts Jewelers. GlennBettsJewelers.com. Let them know you're a TMA listener and you get 15% off at Glenn Betts Jewelers. We are in our Munganess, St. Louis Acura, Munganess, Burkhardt, Alton Toyota, 7 o'clock hour, online at stlouisacura.com and altontoyota.com. Work with Jamie Burkhardt, Clayton Patterson, and Peter Munganest. And then in the service department, Ryan Seiberg and the wonderful team there, even if you didn't get your car from Munganess, St. Louis Acura, Munganess, Burkhardt, Alton Toyota, get your car serviced in that service department. 314-252-0029 is the secret number for our listeners to call or to text and to deal directly with the people in charge. Munganess, St. Louis Acura, Munganess, Burkhardt, Alton Toyota, St. Louis Acura.com, Alton Toyota.com. It is Munganess, sponsor of our 7 o'clock hour and the Daily Fantasy Sports Showdown. Doug, here is Mike Francesa, and he's okay. not happy about UConn and Danny Hurley's dad being close to the bench. Oh, really? But one thing I will be honest about. I have great respect for Coach Hurley, meaning respect. the Patriarch. He should not be allowed to sit there. First of all, <laughs> it's like having another coach there. He shouldn't be allowed to sit there. He should be made to sit back four or five rows behind the Yukon bench so that he doesn't, because he, first of all, he's working over the officials. Secondly, the bottom line is he could coach where he is. The guy's a legendary coach. I would think they wouldn't allow him to sit there. And I think Patino was ticked that he sat, sat there. He even made note of it, mentioned that of it a couple of times. But I've got to be honest, I don't think that makes sense either. That seems to be a little bit of an unfair advantage. You know, if your dad was a Hall of Fame coach, you know, on the Super Bowl... He's not allowed to be wearing a headset next to you if you're coaching the game. Good. Says who? You can't Unless have assistant coaches? Unless he has an role and you've hired him with the team. There. So, to me, he should be, you know, he might want to sit close, but I have no problem with that. If he wants to sit courts, I let him go sit across the court. Or sit underneath the basket. But he shouldn't be, like, right adjacent <laughs> oh, to the head coach. 
That's, that seems like a little bit of an unfair thing. Why? My God. Just something to look into. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Clip the part off at the end. Doug, do you view UConn's championship now as tainted because of the no. location of Dean Early's father? What is? Are there any rules against getting help from outside sources? And I'll be honest, he may have stumbled upon some. Could you imagine their courtside seats and then under the basket <laughs> seats? <laughs> I mean, aren't there lots of assistant coaches out there? Some of them not getting paid, like graduate assistants and things like that. Why would this be a problem? Why is it a problem that your dad was such a good coach he shouldn't be allowed anywhere near the team? <laughs> what? It was a weird thing. I think he's a little bitter about uh, the Big East turmoil. Just something to look into. <laughs> I'm not going to look into it. I mean, is it that slow of a day in sports that that's what you're talking about? You didn't I mean, talk about the Marmol extension. Anything but that. Well, Let's talk in tournament. Hey, do you know if you saw that or not, but Earl Woods is following Tiger under the ropes. He went and talked to him. I bet he's talking about a swing. He can't do that. I mean, he should be five or six deep. Can you think of any other examples like that where the father was around the, the son coaching? I know Don Shula had a son, Mike Shula. Oh, that's right. And he had two sons that were coaches. I don't, but he was coaching still himself. Shanahan? I guess if he were to walk yeah. around the sideline, would anybody really get upset by that? Francesca. You would kind of expect it, wouldn't you? Not to mention, and I mean, Bob Hurley is an absolute legend, but he's a high school coach. He wasn't a college coach. Yeah. A little bit different game. Yeah. Yeah, it's just an odd thing to kind of pick at. Please ask Ozzy what round of funding he's currently in. I would like to participate and know if there's an extra equity kicker he would provide if I want to stick to providing credit or pref and what a minimum multiple he's comfortable giving. It's from Mr. Legs. What is that? What's all that mean? Just something to look into. I'm not looking into that either. <laughs> Please check, check my previous text. I have interest in his beverage company. I can get 16% pref for him with a point and a half. Stop <laughs> it, Lex. A small taste of equity over 12% can be all accrual and no current pay. It's from Mr. Lex. So Doug, Mr. Lex is looking to acquire Ozzy's beverage company, is which he? I believe he's coming in to promote. It's called Backflip. Oh. Well, he's already in about 10 stores. I don't think he needs your <laughs> 20 cents. Mm. Doug, Lex, Lex is a heavy hitter, I guess. He must be. Sounds like he's big in the financial markets. Is he a VC? <laughs> Licks is a VC? Yeah. He's a DB. Oh, oh hey. No. Nice. By the way, I don't know. I think I'm the only one who gets the emails that are sent in, like the hate mails to the group. You guys get those? No, I get them blocked. I get them when they're individual. Oh, you do? Stuff? I thought you, like, deleted it. I did. But you're still getting them? No, I said I have them blocked, so I don't get them anymore. Oh, I th okay. I thought you said I get them a lot. I get ones that are sent individually to me, but the group ones, for whatever reason. Oh, I that's... Uh, so, um, Lick sent in an audio postcard last night to the group account? Oh, God. Well, <laughs> did well, what did he say? Jackson, I don't know. I, for whatever reason, if, it, if they send it individually to me, I get it. But for whatever reason, I don't get the ones that are sent to the group. That's weird. <laughs> Just something to look into. No, we're not looking into it. <laughs> I might look into it today. Licks, nobody wants a loan from your Walmart checking account. That's from Danny Tanner. Hey, Licks, drop a couple tacos in the fryer for me. I'm about three minutes away from your Jack in the Box. That's from Flip Wilson. Oh. And Carlos Spicy Wiener says all Licks can provide is maxed out credit card purchase at 20% interest. <laughs> so it doesn't sound like they think that Licks is actually going to participate. No. That's not great financial advice either. <laughs> Max out the credit cards and pay 20% interest on them. <laughs> it's not great advice. What about breakfast tacos, Doug, from Jack in the Box? I've never had one. Oh, uh, they fire. Are they good? Oh, Doug, yeah. I have a feeling you've stopped there many times. Yeah, they're really good. The one I went to is now abandoned off of Hampton, though. Mm. That one doesn't exist. I'm expecting Iggy to be angry at the wizard because he is doing something successful, just like he hates Joey Zanaboni. That's from Tracy Woods. Mm. Doug, do you see the two similar? Uh, I don't think Iggy would be upset, no. I mean, it's not even... God, I can't even... I can't even acknowledge something that stupid. Yeah, that left you speechless, kind of. Yeah, you don't like Zanaboni. I guess you don't like Ozzy. like it's a Kate Middleton Mother's Day photo. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> Doug, we have all three call, calls of the goals on Saturday night. And ah, us and love to hear them. Would you like to take a listen? Yes, I would. Oh, do we? Yeah. <laughs> Can we just hear them the other day? Because we heard I one. We oh, yeah. I like Joey's I see the clip. Yeah. All right. Hasselhoff sending a similar ball Come in on. front. Oh, Thomas Ostra comes up with a steal. Yeah! Oh, oh baby! Yeah. Oh, Strzok! Oh, Strzok! We're tied at once in L.A. City corner kick, looking to make it 2-2. Jackson, right foot, back stick. Sam gets it. Hey! Oh, yeah! I don't believe it! What an incredible moment! A bicycle, a folly peloton. Joachim Nielsen. Field outside of Berkey. We're trying to seal this one in. Pompeu. Get in there! Yeah! Yeah! City lead! <laughs> the guy, the, his cohort who did the yeah, yeah, that's one of the best, like, oh, additions to a Zamboni call. Yeah. I wonder if it would play better on TV than radio. Because on radio, you, it's, it's hard to know what happened. What do you mean? Well, the, the yeah, they're, yeah, yelling, yeah. they're yelling so much without <laughs> describing the play. You know something good happened, but you can't quite be sure what. Are you going to make fun of Ozzy now because you don't like his calls? Well, I do. I do like his his humor. I like that. No, I Ryan, just don't back get to the blue line. Hunt's taking it all. <laughs> there you go. This Bielek, guy. Bielek. Gives it back to Hunt. Hunt's really in close. Well, gives it to Brian. Brian, roof daddy! Oh, get the shingles out. We need to replace them as he went upstairs and there's a hole. Oh. Fix it before the rain comes. Woo! See, now that was descriptive. I knew exactly what happened. <laughs> God, I enjoy that. That's just so bad, it's funny. <laughs> oh, that was great. But yeah. we know, Doug, I mean, I'm picturing in Manitoba, mm -hmm. 35,000 in the building, minimum, and a little backhand yep. above the goalie. He goes blocker side, mm -hmm. and uh, just it, a little twine tingler upstairs. Right. Way upstairs. Fix the roof. Cycled cross turf to Asqueta, <laughs> down low, gray ball, oh, a freaking oh! Will SK! Will SK! Sniffing it out like those airport dogs did with my cutlery set! Uh-huh. But see, I don't know exactly what happened with the goal. I don't even know who scored. That might have been the ambush game. Oh. Not positive on that, though. <laughs> Apple TV, or the MLS Pass, lets you put on the radio <laughs> broadcast of the game. Really? Which is fun. And so, in that sense, Doug, it kind of mitigates what you're talking about. For, right. for the radio, it can be tough. I understand that. Yeah, on TV, you can just scream, and people solve for themselves what happened. Yeah. But on the radio, Steven you Steven Strasburg asked for his credit card info and a spam email message. Let's go fishing with a PA. Uh. Yeah, it's an ambush because there's nobody yelling behind him like the analyst guys. I guess he said, i got to get on the action, too. I'm going to start yelling at the same time. Now you got two of them yelling. <laughs> now you see some of the fans have started a boycott of some of the soccer games because of this new tournament. Yeah, set the they got oh, going. yeah, yeah. The League's Cup. Yeah. The yeah. MLS has started yeah. the League's Cup tournament as opposed to the historic U.S. For the Lamar Hunt. Yeah, we talked US about that. Cup. I think that might have been while you were in the yeah. Hamptons. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm all for it. Uh, the, what's it? I'm all for it. Quit playing tournaments and things inside your own league. Were they mad they weren't involved? Kafkak and... No, I think they're mad that they're turning their back on a tournament that's been going on forever. Well, the MLS is. Some yeah. MLS teams are participating in it, some are not. Mm -hmm. And uh, Doug City is not participating in it. And some of the supporters groups uh, are furious about it, so they're mm -hmm. boycotting it. And producer Joe said he was going to boycott as well. <laughs> I don't get him. You guys all boycotting? Iggy? I didn't even know what was going on. There you go. So the, by <laughs> definition, yes. Yeah, that's a oh, boycott no in its own right. It makes no sense that you just pick teams to play. And, and you know, St. Louis City had one of the best teams in the, the league last year, and they weren't picked. So I guess the best soccer in the, city in America. Because they're in the Concacaf champions. Yeah, yeah. Well, they should have stayed out of the Concacaf and got. No, that is that's the biggest thing you can be in. Because if you win that, you get to be in the Club World Cup, and that's. As big of a Again, that's two tournaments going on in the same time as your league's going that's on. That's soccer, too. maybe. I'm from the loop and I'm proud. Yeah. Winning the CONCACAF and then going to play in the Club World Cup is much more important than winning an MLS championship. I think we'll play in those and we'll play in the league. 
Well, I can't do that. You play all the time. The soccer players can play. They play like twice a week. Yeah. Either way, it's dumb. And are there oh, guys who kick with both legs? Yes, there are. Viva FIFA. We just have to get used to the, the, the traditions of a new sport for us. Shouldn't be new to us. It's been around forever, but we haven't paid a lot Bundesliga? of attention. Bundesliga? Second Bundesliga. Bundesliga. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a second Bundesliga until I appeared on this program. It's been a nice learning experience for me. I almost would rather not known that there was a second movie. Really? Joseph Zanabosef is a gem in an ocean of dullards and boars. Put him at the Masters, put him at the Olympics, put him at the Super Bowl. That's from Shrimply Pibbles. I'd like to see him do golf, yeah. I bet he could come up with some good lines for that. You'd be in favor of that one, Jiggy? No, I don't no. want him anywhere near a golf oh. course. Would it ruin or, the Masters for you? <laughs> Plays Tariqa. Well, yeah, what if he and yeah, Tariqa are teamed up together? I should put on NBC. You don't have enough people in there yet. <clears throat> We're back on that now. I didn't bring it up. You brought up golf. I know. I just wanted to get your thoughts on it. No, if he would just stick to play-by-play, -play, I think he's very good at it. But the, the changing of the voice <laughs> is a little pass into peas. He's... <laughs> oh, don't... <laughs> that sounded like the sink incident. <laughs> yeah, I did a little bit. Yeah, just out of nowhere, just in the screaming and the voice gets deeper. And Keep your mouth closed afterwards when you lay up with a five iron. <laughs> this isn't the guy you need to call in golf right here, just scolding every shot, every decision. What's wrong with laying up with a five iron? <laughs> I don't know. How that makes sense. So I've so, never laid so up with a five iron in my life. I'm, trying no to think of, I'm trying to think of what holes you lay up with a five iron. I mean... If you got 300 yards to a par five, you're still probably hitting five wood, three wood to try and get there. If you're laying up, you're laying up with a wedge or an eight iron. Nobody lays up with a five iron. Well, maybe not the pros, but most other well, golfers. That's what he was talking about. Yeah, I think he was true. talking about P. Reed. If you're in trouble off the tee and you couldn't get over the water with your second you, shot, I mean, these guys hit their up. five irons like 230. <laughs> but if they were in trouble. Five? If you're, yeah, at least. God, I couldn't even, I, I don't even take the five iron. I could sell my club brand new. If I'm using a five iron, I'm not going to use a three wood. Knock it back about 10 mm -hmm. or 15%. Yeah. But if you if you were behind a tree or something on your on your tee shot and, and then couldn't hit one, a pro, 290 or 300 yards to get over water, you might lay up with a five iron. Just two to go for Tiger in his first event. This well, you, year. Hit, you hit five irons, 230, 240. Right. All right, well, if you got 290 in the hole, you're laying up with a five iron. So you don't go in the water. This is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's something. But I'm just, you know, if you're laying up short of water, they're usually laying up with an eight iron, nine iron. I know, but there's different situations depending on where you are. I know, are. but these courses, I'm, I can't even think of a course where you'd lay up with a five iron. We can ask the wizard. He loves the game of golf. He'll be in studio. Ozzy Smith at 750 here. On TMA, Ozzy Smith joining us in studio, Doug, because ours is the type of presentation where friends feel free to drop in at any time, anytime, anytime whatsoever. Uh, friends like CD Longo and Doug Biggs of the Longo Biggs Law Firm. That's right, CD Longo and Doug Biggs of the Longo Biggs Law Firm online at L O N G O B I G G S dot com. That's Longo. Bigs, and uh, they are loyal listeners of the program. If any of my friends or family are ever injured in an accident, I want them to call Doug Biggs and C.D. Longo at the Longo Biggs Injury Law Firm. For nearly 10 years, Doug Biggs and C.D. Longo have been recognized as the top 40 under 40 personal injury lawyers by Super Lawyers, the National Academy of Personal Injury Attorneys, and the National Trial Lawyers Association. They're not the churn and burn type of law firm. With Doug and CD, you won't be just another file lost in the shuffle. If you have questions about your case, you'll talk to Doug or CD personally, and they will handle every aspect of your case the entire way. They'll get to know you, and you will get to know them. Doug and CD are local, friendly, professional, and most importantly, excellent personal injury lawyers online at longobigs.com. They are listeners of the program. Longobigs.com. Remember, the choice of a lawyer is an important decision that should not be based on an advertisement. Uh, and, uh, Doug, I believe both of them are participating in the J. Randolph Jr. Fan Page Club Championship. Are they really? And it's hard to believe, but uh, this, thing's, this thing's fast approaching. I think we're about 40 days away, and this is when I start to do my mental exercises. What sort of exercises? 7-4-7 uh, uh, breathing. You have to breathe to get ready to play golf? Positive affirmations. Positive affirmations. 
the nerves are something that have owned mm -hmm. me. I could see how that could be the case because if you don't, if you don't win this tournament, it's going to destroy your life. <clears throat> you know, the pressure is enormous because there's also the chance that if you win, you can't make it the next week, <laughs> and so you forfeit. So you want to get that, that win when you can get it, when it's there on the table. That's right. Because it's not going to bother you too much to forfeit because it's a Shishawali event Whoa! in nature. Whoa! No, 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 no. How many forfeits are there generally over the course of this tournament in a year? Over Four. under three and a half. Four or five. Yeah. Two years ago, we had a lot. When there, somebody some almost that, like, forfeited someone all got the way to the like finals. The, yeah, someone got to like the semifinals of playing like one match. Yeah, yeah, that was Cletus. Cletus did. And Callahan, I think he won, he got to the semis with three forfeits. Because Cletus is only suggestion to play is like Tuesday at noon. No, he can well. play any time after. He just starts working at three o'clock in the morning, which I don't know how he does it. It's dark outside, and he's put in windows, but. Right. Uh, Harrison's brother, Master, just sent in a screenshot of his search for Iggy on the Gen app and says, still no Gen as of 319. He is on a crusade to keep you out of this tournament. Well, there will be no Gen. I've already told you. I'm not re-upping with the, the Metropolitan Golf Association. It was 17.6 before they took it down because I didn't re-up. <clears throat> That's what my handicap is. You won't oh. see me on Gin. You won't see me on... Grint. Grint. You won't see me anywhere. It's 17.6. Either take it or leave it. Now, how does the point six work? I don't know. I don't figure it out. But do you become an 18? Uh, these are all chorus handicaps. Doug, you want to know what his... Uh, well, I guess he won't show up in the app. But then you, that's your course number, right. and that shifts by the course and the tees you play on. And then, let's say, you're an 18 and I'm a 5. That means I'm giving you 13, you call them poppy seeds? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, so you're getting 13 pops. Now, will seniors get to hit off the senior tees? You have that option, but then you will get less pops because the course handicap will be lower from yeah. the red tees. Everyone else will be hitting on the white tees. So when I played Cletus last year, a couple of years ago, he went out and researched. <laughs> he did. He asked me to come out with him. Doug, did it. you walk the course before your match? Several, several times, not once. And he called me and gave me the whole rundown. Now, in 13, I think it would be okay. But Let's pull up a 13. A that's a par that, 5. I can't get in thir 13 and 2. I no, can't do it. It's no. not going to give me much distance, so I'm just going to play the whites and keep the pops. Okay. Well, Dude, that would be a decent really, strategy. They hate that Iggy doesn't have a handicap. Me and Doug don't either, by the way. No. We're not care. good enough to have them. Well, you guys are the important ones. I mean, the, the people on the text line and the... Oh, I'm not important you at know, all. The, uh, I am. The fan page, you guys are the important ones, so if you guys don't want me to play, I won't. I just do whatever uh -oh. the important uh -oh. people. Uh -oh. Here comes WD, the party. No, yeah. no matchup with who we wee, play. Wee, wee, wee. Or Todd <laughs> no, I'll just do whatever the important people want me to do. I got right I sense self-pity coming. So self-pity. No, I'm playing. I don't really care what they think. Uh, oh. Mr. Licks has issued a statement. Your opponent, I am fine with Iggy being a 17.6 for our match as long as he is not playing the senior tees. Having seen his swing on the TMA golf videos, I have absolutely no clue how he is a 17.6, but that's what he is, and we're locking it in. Mr. Licks. Doesn't seem like he's impressed with your swing. No, we saw this. I'll be higher if you want. If you think I should be higher because of my swing, I'm just going by what the handicap says. And I'm playing the white tees. I'm not playing the senior tees, so... Doesn't the handicap suggest as the tournament goes on how Leggy's handicap adjusts as he progresses through the bracket? That's from Hoosier Daddy. Isn't it a... Doesn't your handicap not change throughout the... Uh, that was the original rule way back when, Plowhawk, but now it does change. Damn. Okay. Well, you can figure it out yourself. So if Plowsy and I are, are 20s, yep. and we should go out and shoot a... 90 have a big day and shoot a 90 nice. our handicap will go down to what well it depends on the course and the tees and the slope and the rating well it would be that uh, and then only uh course. eight of your 20 last scores count toward your handicap i haven't counted any of my last scores I have Doug, a... we're gonna go out swinging in the first round and do our best huh yeah so if a lot of people are playing for the first time Maybe the second time all year if we're playing in April 28th. So chances are your handicap's not going to change your first two or three rounds because you won't have enough won't have enough scores in there. 
Who's your daddy's question doesn't matter because Iggy will not be advancing past the first round. Mm. That's from Mr. Licks, and that reminds me of Joe Namath at Super Bowl three. Yeah, I'm making the guarantee to beat the Colts. Oh, shots. Well, go ahead and keep bragging all you want. Really? Think he'll take his measure? I don't know. I've never seen him play. Yeah. He could be a sandbagger. Iggy, I'll Venmo you $35 for a gin. That's from the Loomster. How about that? I don't have Venmo. Okay. That's out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could get it real quick. No, I can't. Why? I got my, I got my bank routing number. <laughs> I don't know why. I got my bank routing number all over the place. I don't so need it good. there, too. Oh, brother. A lot of people tapping into that account. <laughs> <laughs> they won't get much out of it, but they're more than welcome to. <laughs> God, I went through all the trouble for this. Uh, well, man. if someone's going to offer to give you money, maybe that'd be the incentive to get it started. I'm not taking any money from somebody just to get me a handicap. Oh, gosh. Some guy, a nice guy, last night <laughs> he me and said, uh, Iggy, I'll buy that laptop off you for $300. I said, it's, it's a gift. I'm not selling it. Thank you for the offer, though, but... Did you bring it in so we can get her going? Oh, look at that. I forgot. <laughs> look at this, look at that. Not to mention, that's a fleece job. Yeah. 300 bucks. Up that uh, Doug, they're not happy with the content on the show. Well, they never are. There's nothing more exciting than 20 handicappers talking it over. Is Ozzy ready yet? Uh, hey. Leave way. Yeah, Ozzy's going to love you. <laughs> <laughs> the Texas are one texting this stuff in, talking about handicaps and mm -hmm. you don't have one, you can't play, and Lix is texting in. We're not bringing it up. Me and Doug are going to go out and shoot cool, like, 86s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won't. Iggy. I say this with sincerity. Okay. I think if you cut out the darts and cut out the social media, you might actually find some peace in life. You won't hate everything that exists. You won't get angry about things out of your control. Ladies might let you get off more strode loads. Oh! <laughs> if you are a bit more pleasant. And then he put a little TM in there, Doug, so I guess he trademarked strode loads? You can do Did that? He really? I guess. That's from Shrimply Pibbles. I'm sure the trademark people love to see that. Got a new one today, Strode Loads. I'm a very happy person. Just what you see on the show doesn't mean what I'm like in real life. I don't go home and start kicking things. Very peaceful. Oh, yeah. What did the Greg Lansky tweet say? It wasn't that peaceful yeah, there. I mean, that kind of stuff gets it, to me. But Is Beer Cats in the uh, field? Does anybody know? No, he's not. Okay, because <clears throat> oh, he's concerned about this. He says, so if Iggy plays all summer and continues to improve, his cap will not change. That seems really fair for everyone else. What lazy bum can't take five minutes to get a free grint? That's from Beer Cats. Why not get a grint? Why do you care so much about my life? <laughs> a grint is free? I believe so. And you have to produce how many scores from oh, past? Iggy got it. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll be, I'll be new on grint. I have no scores. So, you know, if I play five matches... After my sixth match, I may have a handicap. You about to be a great guy? Well, you got it. You know, don't you have to have like five scores in there? I am putting. Uh, any Doug, in. how many scores do you need I to? And I have no idea. scores in Grint. I, mean, I think Doug is already going. Okay, I'm out. Come up. <laughs> I haven't played since Hit and Giggle. Does Doug have a handicap? Anybody bitching about that? <laughs> <laughs> Iggy, I told them out there. I told everybody at the beginning. Me and Doug don't have one either. No. Like this is universal. This is just for Iggy. But they are really honed in on Iggy right now. Mm. You got them locked in. And I like had a helicopter one. turret. You've never had one. I had one. I just let it lapse. <laughs> I get it. I don't know. Are you yelling at me? I'm no. Gonna, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm yelling at anybody. <laughs> Do me a favor. Can you guys ask the wizard if he would come out and hit the ceremonial first ball of the J. Randolph Jr. Mm. Fan Page Club Championship? Nico can sing the national anthem, too. That's from KG and O-Town. And, Doug, he is uh, handling the organization of the Fan Page Club Championship. That'd be a nice touch. Ozzy would probably want to play a whole round. He'd probably do it as much as he likes golf, and then yeah. he'd just play. Man, he would get out there and see some of those athletes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's never seen anything I like that. I saw Pujols the other day uh, playing with true. Michael Block. Yeah, they play, they play a lot together. Actually. Do they? Yeah, they do. Block's a pro in, Ant like in Southern California, right? Yeah. Is he still living out there, Albert? I know he's not living here, but... He's got that personal service contract. I bet Albert Pujols can hit a golf ball 400 yards. <laughs> <laughs> Have you yeah, seen I think Mike... he's really gotten into it. Have you seen he's Mike Trout at free... Top yeah, Golf? That, that, yeah. Oh God, that missile. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even actually see the ball. It's the first time I've ever, like, it didn't go on. I think it went over the fence back there. <laughs> he could put two of those <laughs> Top Golf mm -hmm. one after the other, and I think he would have cleared both of them. It's mm -hmm. amazing how much these guys are into golf. I remember... Uh, Dave Green did a magazine. I forget what it was called. Um, 
but they wanted to ask some of the um, <clears throat> athletes around town their favorite golf course. So I went in the <clears throat> Cardinal Clubhouse, and um, these guys just don't like to talk. <clears throat> so I go up to Albert. I said, Albert, you got a few minutes? He said, no, man, i got to go hit, got things to do. I said, okay, I just want to ask you about your favorite golf course. Oh, man, we can talk golf. What do you want to know? <laughs> oh, you're talking like 20 minutes talking about, well, Boone Valley, number 12 at Boone Valley is such a and like 20 minutes. He didn't have time to talk, but as soon as we wanted to talk golf, he just started talking golf for 20 minutes. Huh. They just love golf. Yeah. No one freaking cares! Oh. <laughs> so the ghost of the Fister Hotel, and that's spelled with a P, you know that? Mm, up in Milwaukee. Yeah. And I think Todd Racing tacked that he didn't have a, 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 a score. Just We'll just play straight up, dude. We'll play straight up. You and Todd up, Racing are going heads up, fine. straight up, no poppy seats. Doesn't sound like he plays a lot. Before the season started in the off season, neither did I. And since it's match it's so play, you got much, a shot. Yeah, it's so much easier just to not have pop. So I am just fine, Todd, going straight up with you. No pops. All right, that it's has been agreed. So we can settle that right well, now. So you better figure it out because the people are going to make it up their own rules. KG and O Town's the commissioner. Yeah, no, well, we I'm are not, getting I'm really not, relaxed. I'm not right calling now. you out, Plazzi, but some people just start making up their own stuff. Like you know, we came up with the rule: playing it down everywhere. <laughs> you know, instead of rolling it here, you play it down here. We said we're playing it down everywhere. Well, okay, I'm playing. It out. I'm playing, playing, it up. playing it down. No fluffing. It's I'm not up to you. It. Well, it was because I was. It's doing not up it. to you. Two years ago, I was running the thing. But you're not now. No, I but can't. I'm saying people will make up their own rules. I'm playing with another two, a twosome over there, and I look over and they're both rolling their balls. I said, "You can call a penalty if you want." He just rolled his ball in the rough. No, we're rolling it everywhere. What? No, oh, we're just making up our own rules. Wouldn't it be better to roll it everywhere, just so that there's no arguing, there's no fighting, there's no penalties? You want to improve your lie a little bit? You go ahead and go do it. As long as everybody can do it, wouldn't that be the no. the way to avoid the most trouble? No, there's no trouble. Just don't roll it anywhere. And you got the same rules I there. followed rules. I want people to know that. But then you look away and you look back and you think the guy may have rolled it. It look, looks like he's, his ball's in a better lie than it was when you were watching. And then there's arguments. It's not fair to the decent <laughs> players who can play out of the rough. Now they're playing a 20 handicap, giving them shots, and they get to fluff it up in the rough. <laughs> I'm just saying. I have to just, agree with Higgs. Just to avoid the fighting. I would just argument. say just play it down. That, yeah. That's what I yeah. would say. Yeah, right Everybody's right. playing it down. Good. What does it got to do with rules? Uh, well, Don't I, touch it. I think that's that's gonna, a rule. I think that's what's going to lead to the arguing and the fighting. And the yeah, but that's part complaining. of the... That's part of the, the well, the if you want to oh, you the break the rules, is half of the vibe of the tournament. You want to break rules, you cheating. should get penalized. <laughs> hey, you just rolled your balls. Two pull, two stroke penalty. What? No, 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 don't argue. You shouldn't touch your ball. If you did, it's a penalty. You guys are really making my job difficult with this whole gin thing. Thanks. That's KJ <laughs> Nota. Yeah, it's, you're going to find out. There's going to be people that don't have gins. So what are you going to do, Grant? KJ Nota, what are you going to do? I'm not talking about me, <laughs> or Doug, or Plowsy. Thank you. I'm <laughs> going. Everybody else. I'm going to get in on that. People outside the show. A I mean, you know what? You know what I shoot. I think he just said two years ago he was running the thing, yet he had no accountability when the money could not be found. That's some cuckleberry fin. It sounds like he's launched an investigation. He wanted to make the rules but not do any of the work. Yeah. No, it had nothing to do with that. Was that the, it's was exactly, exactly what it I was. didn't touch money. I wasn't collecting money. I told you where to go. I told you who to pay. You got to go to the clubhouse. You got to pay Mikey, and he will take care of it. You'll be well. Those guys. I love how he said that. Nobody knew on the radio who that was. <laughs> who was the guy in the black shirt that was <laughs> that's taking who all I, the money? That's who took my money. Didn't we play at Gateway? No, a few years ago I played Normandy. Yeah, we played Normandy a few years ago. I yeah. think after that we had no money, but we went to Gateway. But, um, <laughs> no, but they weren't writing it down. Uh, I don't know who was in there. VIP Pat, Four Mikey. I don't know who was working in there. But whoever was taking the money wasn't writing it down and scratching him off. So I said, we're missing like five people's money. I went in the clubhouse. I said, where's the list of people who paid? Oh, we didn't keep a list. I got no, I got no way of knowing who didn't pay. So it wasn't, I wasn't responsible for the money. Is this the show live or is this a rerun of any show from the last oh. three springs? Really? It's true. Make it stop, Tim! Okay. That's from Zach's wife, Gummy and Doug. He's not happy. I don't remember us talking about this in the last week or so, but... We've had this very similar conversations many times. We just can't figure it out, I guess. People are not well, happy you keep, you keep calling me out, I'm going to defend myself. Okay. So my text in and says, it's my fault the money was missing. I had nothing to do with the money. What'd you do with all this money? I had nothing to do with it. I didn't see it. I didn't touch it. 
I just said, this is like a deposition <laughs> right now, bro. I said, go in and get your money. It's in the clubhouse. When you took the money, is that when you went to Bermuda, the Bahamas? No. I, I get out of the country? I haven't been on vacation in 20 years. Oh. Jamaica. Well, three-day getaway. <laughs> <laughs> Business trip. <laughs> Business trip. It really wasn't a vacation. Doug, the hot take love should come out for this uh, mug and ass. St. Louis Hacker, mug and ass burger at 7 o'clock hour. Do you want to support the EDF group as a sponsor of TMA? They sponsor the hot take mittens. It's real simple. Do you have a fire extinguisher we work? The answer is yes, you certainly do. So please email the EDF group at fire at the EDF group.com so a technician can come out and explain to your team how the EDF group can save your company money. Again, that email address is fire at the EDF group.com. The EDF group is hide and we'll provide your silly having hide fires. Experience the EDF group difference. Learn more at the EDF group. Dot com. Doug, why don't you uh, tell people about Collier and Thompson? They're the sponsor of our phone line, 636-9004, TMA. They sure are. It's a company owned by Carolyn Beard and Bob Strati, just fabulous people who can do tremendous work on your home. They always like to say, that don't wait until you're getting ready to sell your house, to upgrade your house. Do it now while you're there, while you can enjoy it, while you can add true value to your home. You spend more time in your house than anywhere else on earth, so why not make it look absolutely the best it possibly can make it more comfortable more aesthetically pleasing just someplace where you want to be and Callier and Thompson can do that with kitchens bathrooms they can make them look like show places but they also do much more they'll redo your basement wine rooms man caves bars accent rooms fireplace walls offices you name it they can do it and it's all in-house you don't have to go to a bunch of different contractors to figure out how to get it done Callier and Thompson has them all right there in-house at their uh, headquarters there on Manchester Road in Baldwin next to Uncle Bill's Pancake House. Bill. Got a big showroom there, more than 10,000 square feet, more than 20 kitchen displays alone for you to browse through, get some ideas. They will walk you through the whole process. They've got many people that have worked there for years and years. They've done thousands of homes in St. Louis. Ask someone who has a new Callier and Thompson kitchen. I'm sure they'd love to show it to you and say, look at this, look what they have done. Callier and Thompson just does outstanding work for you. Service and quality is their number one priority. And if they did a job, oh, 10 years or so ago, and you got a problem, maybe you got a door off a hinge or you need caulk or something, Matthew, the service manager and appliance installer, will go right back out and they'll help you. It's not over until you are absolutely satisfied. It's Callier and Thompson. Come home to quality online at callierandthompson.com. There you go. Hey, uh, I, I've, I've talked about this on uh, my podcast, talked about it on TMA. Uh, posted something about it on the TMA fan page, which is uh, on Facebook. And uh, if you are interested in uh, a sound story, we are now doing, for lack of a better term, a life documentary in which we shoot video. We're going to do this in uh, separate studios. We're going to give away three free uh, and uh, take videos and images, including older videos and images, digitize them, and then cover the video. Doug calls it B-roll. I don't know if that's I the appropriate that term now, since we're not using it's video. Um, but uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do them free. So if you have wanted to get a sound story, this would be a sound story. I will conduct the interview, and we were go are going to do this at uh, a new studio, and then uh, we will... Uh, use them for marketing purposes, so whoever would be doing the interview would have to be comfortable with it being public. But if you are interested, uh, the great Peter Rep, our general manager for Sound Story, uh, has a form and a database, and we are going to choose the three we are going to uh, give this to this week. So if you're interested, I can email you the form. Just email me at tmckernan at insidestl.com. That's T-M-C-K-E-R-N-A-N at insidestl. Dot com for this Sound Story Life documentary. Doug, you have one today. I have one today, don't I? I yeah, that's the case. Yeah, right? twelve thirty for me. Eleven thirty for you me. You can do me if you need people. Doug, there you go. Well, we're, we're not necessarily in need, but what we want to get are the three best of the however many that okay. have been submitted right now. So that is uh, the thought process. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, if you are interested, uh, you are uh, welcome to uh, submit an application. The application, by the way, will take you two minutes. This isn't like some. 30 page deal. It's pretty simple. Uh, T. McKernan at InsideSTL.com, and then I will email you the form, and uh, and then you can fill it out. And it, uh, and then we're going to make the uh, decision on which direction we go with which three of the applicants 
probably Friday. So if you get an email, you know you have been selected, and then we will set up the interviews. And uh, Peter Rep and KGNO Town will shoot it. I will conduct the interview. They'll edit it together, and uh, and you will be able to see the final product, which uh, will be like a life documentary for private citizens. MySoundStory.com. Email me if you're interested at tmckernan at InsideSTL.com. Ozzy Smith is going to join us in studio here in a matter of moments. He is promoting his brand new uh, beverage, Doug, Backflip. Backflip. Yeah, how about that? I like that name. No. What kind of beverage is that? Uh, it's like uh, vodka, I believe. No, it's it's got you got a vodka option, you got a tequila option. I guess. Oh, nice. Yeah, with some uh, lemon. I think there's some raspberry. Cherry there. lemonade is the image yeah. I have right here. Oh, yeah. yum! That How do you good. do? Yeah. Great for out on the uh, golf course or a little day drinking, Doug. Mm -hmm. You ever like to get a uh, little uh, nectar in you during the day? Grape. How about grapefruit Paloma? Oh boy, sure. Sounds good. Looks yeah. good. Good looking can too. It is. It is a sharp look. Yeah, the wizard. So that's what he'll be talking about mm -hmm. with us. Uh, Plowhawk, you want to ask him about uh, Ali Marmol's uh, extension? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to avoid any of that. I would just let him promote mm -hmm. his beverage and have a grand old time. I don't think he's ready for takes. <laughs> a little early. He's retired. Yeah. He didn't come here to stir yeah, it up. he didn't come here for that. <laughs> Kelly Chase didn't either, and the next thing you know, Ken yeah. Hitchcock took the high hard one. <laughs> he and sure a couple did. of players. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God almighty. <laughs> Guys, did Boots just try to get a free sound story? <laughs> from the 314. He already got a free yeah, one. Yeah, Stephen Wildwood. Yeah. Yeah, Stephen yeah, Wildwood. Go find that. I'm sure he put it on the, face, on the fan page. He has it. Did you keep a copy of that for your own records? No. How about that? Doug? It wasn't okay. for me. He bought it for, it for some Stephen reason. Wildwood. But you could make a copy of it. And why did he buy it? I have no clue. Okay. He wanted to uncover some dirt, probably. Yeah, probably. Did you get any? I don't think I uh, really said anything outlandish. Okay. I mean, I opened up. I mean, Learn's good at that, getting you to answer stuff. But Yeah, I don't know why I wanted it, but he's got it, so enjoy it. You think he listens to it on the, on the reg? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why he paid to do it. I mean, I'm not going to say no because it would have cost Tim's company money and Learn money if I mm -hmm. said no. So It was an altruistic gesture on your part. I think so, whatever that means. <laughs> Like doing something for someone else. Jackson, tell me about your hair because it's thick and lush. You're a man in love. You're thin. All the ladies are talking about you and they're mad that you're a man in love because that means you're off the market. Yep, taken. Sorry, ladies. Um, but the hair's feeling great. Really, uh, really liking what we're seeing right now with the hair. Woke up this morning, run a little water through it real quick, and just if, if you can feel the thickness. Really. Is that right, really? Yeah, it's a lot different than it was just a year ago, and that's Ew. thanks to our friends over at St. Louis Hair Restoration. They looked at my head with that free hair consultation that you can get if you walk into St. Louis Hair Restoration. The treatment plan they picked out for me, or they suggested for me, was finasteride. It's just a generic form of Propecia. Take that every morning, and a little laser cap helps with the regrowth of the hair, especially in the crown region, and we're seeing some real results. And then if you mention TMA, you get $250 wow, off wow, wow. of a hair treatment, a hair treatment much like Doug's, an FUV mm -hmm. procedure. That's what I had. I went in there uh, early one day, and first they sat me down, took some pictures of the uh, before pictures that they're going to use later. And then Dr. Palinga took another look at my scalp, and he drew a little, little sharpie, a little pen along the hairline where he was going to put the, put the new hair. And then you sit down, and they uh, numb you up, and they numb you up real nice-like. And then they shave the, the back and the sides of my head in the area where they're going to transplant it. And then the technicians come in, and some of them have been there like 20 years. They all know what they're doing, professionals at, at every, at every uh, degree you could possibly be. And they, they take the skin grafts out of the hair that is not subjected to male pattern baldness, and then they move it from the side or back of your hair where you got lots of hair. Donor to, area. For me, the front, where I didn't have much hair at all. And then about... Then you just sit back and wait. And no, there was no pain involved at all for me. You sit back and wait, and about three or four months later, you start to see the tufts. And oh. about six months later, you start to see lots of tufts. Oh. And I'm about nine months out now, and I've got like my 20-year-old hairline back. Maybe better than it was when I was 20 years old. Look at these tufts. Tufty McQuisperson yeah, is are. just one name that they call me now. <laughs> so it certainly worked for me, and it'll work for you. It's not a matter of if this procedure is going to work. It works. It works absolutely great. And if... Um, 
baldness is something that's bugged you. If you look in the mirror and you're never really happy with the way you look, do something about it. You know, you only live once, and there's a great mm. resource right here in town, St. Louis Hair Restoration. They will do you upright as they did me. Go to their website, stlouishairrestoration.com. Look at some of the uh, before and after pictures. You'll be blown away at the difference it makes. Just like a people. dog. Just and look they'll at you. help you, too. Just look at these, these wisps. And Jackson's talking about running his hands through his hair to start his day. My God, this guy. That's how it begins now. Yeah, he's flexing yeah. on us. Uh, hey, 2060 Digital, making digital connections that drive results in a fast-paced world of digital marketing, making meaningful connections with your audience. Yeah, it can be challenging for any business, but that's where 2060 Digital, which is a Hubbard company, uh, is able to help you out. Uh, business owner or marketer, you're seeking more strategic ways to reach and engage with customers? Well, that is where... 2060 Digital can help you out. 12 years of expertise specializing in simplifying the complexities of digital marketing, demystifying the process, transforming from a challenge into an opportunity, and enhancing online presence, optimizing digital campaigns, and increasing customer engagement. Think your business has room to grow? Let 2060 Digital prove it to you. Visit 1057thepoint.com slash 2060 Digital. That's twenty sixty digital. One zero five seven. The point slash twenty sixty digital. Uh oh, we have we have breaking news. Huh. What's going on, Jackson? Uh, so I have the wizard at eight fifteen. Eight fifteen. Okay, uh, he's uh, now going to join us at eight fifteen. But Ed Herman's here, and we can. Uh... Well, Ed Herman can join us. We can talk it over with Ed Herman. I'll bring right. him in right now. Oh, okay. Ed Herman's going to join us, and then Ozzy Smith will be with us at eight fifteen. How about that? Who's going along with him? What? Who's going along with him? Who's going along with him? I know he's here. What does that mean, though? Who's going along with? Well, there's some station going over their time limit. Ed Herman, oh, Hall of Fame shortstop with the Cardinals, right now. started his career with the Padres. I was going to come in here doing a backflip to impress you all. <laughs> um, Can you do that? Then I opted against it. Did you? I, I, no, of course. I can't do anything. I can't do a pull-up. Were you a pretty good athlete in your day? Um, only, you know what? I was a decent baseball player. Is I that played, right? I played into high school, yeah. And then... Um, uh, there was really no good position for me, given my physicality. Uh, I was like a thumb in a world of fingers. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was that guy. I was like, uh, I was a little chubby, a uh, little catcher? catcher type. Yeah, yeah. Spanky like, Laval here. Like the yeah, I was I was a Spanky type. And and uh, the um, what's his face? That kid from Ham, you know, from uh, Sandlot. Oh, oh yeah, sure. uh, yeah, that little yeah, it kind of yeah. reminded me of that. I ran into that actor actually oh, yeah. about uh, one month ago. Where'd you run into? We him? were at a legal conference down in Miami, and you know, really nice guy. And he does some some marketing stuff now. You know, he didn't just do that movie. You know, they, they, he's got like sixty five credits. Um, you now some of the credits are, are are pretty minor. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna inflate I'm not gonna inflate Ham's career, but uh, very nice guy, and and he looks. Exactly the same <laughs> as he did when he was a little kid. Is he's that just right? sort of he's not the tallest guy in the world. He and I were about the same height, frizzy curly hair, and that face, that mug. Mm -hmm. It's it's it, it, I mean it's and everybody knows him and he's yeah. just gotta live with it. He seems to yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. He's a good actor as a little kid. You know, he's not bad. Everybody yeah. just wants to yeah, do was, the whole right? uh, you're killing me smalls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, his big line from that. <laughs> you know, that's gotta be listen, that's a double edged sword, but you, you wouldn't mind that, would you? If you were known in cinematic history, because you happen to utter one iconic line, and you know you're going to have to live with that the rest of your life, that everybody who sees you is going to want you to mm -hmm. say it, but you also know that you have a legacy that is permanently entrenched in Hollywood history. Is it worth it? Would you do Doug, it? Doug, would you take that? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I'd take it, too. Yeah. Of course, right? There's a lot of child actors that got typecast. Gary Coleman, what you talking Gary about, Coleman. Willis? Yeah, exactly. Jerry Mathers and, you know, like the kids from Leave it to Beaver. Like Wally, every time I see Wally, I think of his famous line, Gee, Mary Ellen, you don't sweat much for a fat girl. There you go. That was, you know, that's, that was writing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when they knew how to write these shows. Right. You know, they weren't worried about... Because they wrote the way kids actually talk. Mm -hmm. you know, Can't do that now. No, we you know what? It's a shame, too, because uh, we don't show reality. What about you over there? Would you do it? Blah, boy. <laughs> you do it for sure, right? Why not? I mean, if that's... I don't think Iggy's mic's on now, Paul. There, there we go. go. Oh, there we go. It's hard. I can hardly see him. It doesn't look like he... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, why not? You know, I mean, it's certainly better to be remembered for, like, one famous line than one really stupid thing that you did. Oh, and there's gosh, a lot yeah. of people that are remembered for just one really stupid thing that yeah, they did. Yeah, a lot of people in prison. 
Yeah. yeah. So what are you guys talking about this morning? Well, we got the wizard coming in. I know. Well, why don't if we? You, let's you, let's make believe that I, I'm the wizard. Yeah, and just ask me the questions I'm, that you were going to ask him. Well, so uh, and I'll Ozzie, see if and, I can. Uh, I don't want to disappoint the fans. They wanted the wizard. The wizard has this new uh, product out. Are you aware of this? He's gotten into the. Uh, here, let me show you what we got here. I I, I was Back listening this morning. Cherry lemonade. So it's a vodka drink and then also a tequila drink. Is he going to be bringing in some samples? I th I actually think he is. You know what? Should I'm, we take the edge off, start our day with a nice foundation? Uh, listen, I, I think, first of all, it's well within our rights as human <laughs> beings. <laughs> listen, we're of age. Yeah. You're over 21, aren't we're you? We're of age. I yeah. am. I buy quite a bit. I'm not a huge drinker, but can I tell you, I say this in honesty, I have not tasted it yet, so I can't give it the official Ed Herman endorsement. Uh -huh. But you talk cherry lemonade uh -huh. and you're already speaking my language yeah. that's a flavor combination that i'm i'm particularly fond of yeah i like that yeah yeah that's going to be good i hope he brings some in i think he's bring, awesome. I, i've been told that he's bringing some in is he gonna mind that i'm because I'm, I'm i'm planning on just like hanging on him i don't think anybody uh, like within a couple of like not <laughs> sure on him, to that. But within yeah. a couple of inches <laughs> he is so good with i'm sure you've met him probably I've, a bunch I've, of i have i have met him a couple of times but i wouldn't uh I wouldn't go so far as to say that he'd have any idea who the heck I am. Right. Um, which is fine. That just makes him like everybody else. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, listen, I, who can, who's not in awe of Ozzy Smith? Here's a question we wanted to ask him, but we're afraid to. What did you think of the Ali Marmol signing? You know, contract it, extension. I, I think it's fairly standard in baseball to not have your manager start a season in the last year of their contract. You know, it's like hanging there with a sort of Damocles over your head. The you sword know. of Damocles. Yeah, that's yes. the, the, the sword mm -hmm. that hangs by a thread over the king's throne. Right. And and uh, that's no way to operate. You're not going to get the best out of him. And I'm tired of Ollie being viewed as a scapegoat for this team. This team had deep-rooted problems that had nothing to do with that man. He's a young guy. He's learning. The team wants to show a little faith in him. Since when are we so quick to to thumb our nose up at a, at a showing of loyalty or giving somebody a legitimate shot instead of having them spend their whole season with the talk being they could be on the chopping block because they're in a contract year. I mean, is that the kind of distraction that's going to help the Cardinals, or is it going to hurt the Cardinals? Cardinals have the money to eat. If the guy doesn't work out, they'll eat the contract. It's not that big. But to, to say, Leah, let's give ourselves the, the best chance to win this year. Let's start with a manager who's under constant threat of being fired. I mean, that's no way to start this now, season. Now, they did do that six years ago with Mike Matheny, and they did terminate him. Right, and how did that work out? Not well, too I mean, good. That's, that's results-oriented, but what I would say is very rarely in college football do you see a guy go in with the last year, but I feel like in baseball this is more common, and well, especially coming off of the last year with an unhappy fan base. It's true, but you know, again, uh, I, can we just take a breath as a society and recognize that our team is not going to you know, kick butt every single year, and that it's, it's okay not to try to scapegoat anybody for one bad season? So what my contention on this thing, and I said this yesterday on this show and then on 101 ESPN, is I don't know if you can have, I mean, I'm sure people do have the same mindset, but I feel like you have to compartmentalize that if you thought that the roster was flawed, which is what I thought going into the season, yes. then how can it be the fault of the manager? And whoever you think is the best manager, whether it be Skip Schumacher or take your pick of somebody else who's been successful, Snitker, I suppose, in Atlanta, Dave Roberts in Los Angeles, if you want to look around, uh, what would they have done significantly differently than Ali Marmol? So from my standpoint, the failure of this organization in, in, in the last 18 months is on the front office and not on Ali Marmol. With that said, I wouldn't have given him an extension. Well, I mean, you know, years ago, Earl Weaver, you know, one of the Doug, great one of your friends, the yeah. bandy little well, rooster. Well, well, you know sure this. We I mean, friends. Earl Weaver, a Hall of Fame manager, he, he used to say, you know, a, a season's 162 games. That's 54 times three. He would say every team is going to win at least 54 games and every team is going to lose at least 54 games, with rare exception. The, so the whole season really boils down to that other 54 games. You know, you win enough of them, you're going to go to the playoffs. You lose enough of them, you're going to be a losing team. His opinion, managerial decisions at best could affect the outcome of five or six games a year, which, you know, is not nothing because if you look at the standings at the end of the year, that extra five or six games one way or the other is going to influence the standings. But... You know, here he was getting all of this credit for these amazing teams and really neutralizing it and recognizing there's only so much he can do. And the rest of it is, you know, the players have got to do their part. What bothers me, what I'd be talking about this morning is 
seeing that the San Francisco Giants were able to get Blake, Blake Snell, Snell on two a two-year deal for $62 million, mm -hmm. starts to make our three-year Sonny Gray deal not look quite as appealing. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know how Sonny's going to work out. I hope he works out fine. But, geez, aren't you sitting there saying... Snell would look awfully good at the top of this rotation, and we absolutely could have afforded a two-year commitment. I think uh, if the Cardinals would have known that was going to be the market price for him back in November when they signed Gray, that they would have taken that over Sonny Gray. I think what they're trying to do, Ed, is uh, limit themselves to exposure beyond three years yes. with all of their players. The only con players who are under contract beyond three years are Arnato and, uh, and Contreras, and I think that has to do with the television deal. The yeah. uncertainty of the television deal. I could be off on that. That's no. my theory. No, no, they're definitely looking at, uh, you know, they don't want to make long-term financial commitments. I just feel like, and I don't know, I, I Scott Boris, we talked about this a few weeks ago. Well, I, I think he did a terrible job here. Oh, he's, got a, um, he's still got Montgomery sitting out there. Yeah, I mean, to have these guys sitting there when you've got baseball starting uh, overseas, what, tomorrow? Or this week, Thursday, I think. Yeah, yeah this week. Yeah, with uh, um, San Diego and, and Los a and Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, for him to still have premier players out there unsigned and not getting them good deals, this happens to him. This happened a lot to him. This goes back all the way to the Adrian Beltre pillow contract years ago. He convinces these guys to hold out, hold out, hold out, but then he doesn't deliver. Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't deliver for Snell. Mm -hmm. Now Snell has to actually go out there. And reprove to the world once again that he's the Cy Young guy and not the guy the year before that. Mm -hmm. And uh, th that's that's not good. He did not do, in my opinion, he did not do right by his client. And, and now we'll probably sue for collusion. How, how could you guys not want these players? They're the greatest players. You must have colluded. Uh, well, you know, before. I think, that, you know, the thing is with the luxury tax, collusion is almost not even necessary. There is a built-in collusion where they all these uh, teams that have the money, but they, it's going to cost them an insane amount because of the luxury tax. And also, I, I don't, I'm, I'm kind of in a way glad that we don't get Snell. I've decided he's, he's not interested in winning. Uh, he was interested in lifestyle because he was focusing on these California teams and he wanted to be in Seattle, and that's a lifestyle choice. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't want to. He didn't want to be outside of that, so he took a two-year deal with the with the Giants because it was as close to Seattle as he was going to get. That's no reason to pick a team. I don't like any of these guys unless the only reason they pick their team is because they want to win a championship. That's it. You know, they're all going to pay money. Well, but the the issue there now is I'm not sure you'd come to St. Louis if you want to win a championship. <laughs> well, that's true. Although, team. Yes, yeah, but but. There are certain cities, certain franchises that you know if they're down, it's very temporary. Like the Red Sox, you could say the same. You could say, oh, they're a lousy team. But no, no, no. We've seen the Cardinals. We've seen the Red Sox. These are franchises that you know have a commitment to winning. So even if, you don't, even if you're not going to win on day one, you have every reason to believe that over a three- or four-year period, they're probably going to make the playoffs most of those years because they're committed to it. So, yeah, there's a difference there. But, I mean, San Francisco, no knock on them. I, you know, they're doing the best they can, but right out of the gate, I, I asked my son about it last night. I said, what would you think of uh, San Fran signing Snell? He says, well, I can officially predict the Giants will finish third in their division yeah, with, com division. with confidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, honestly, uh, Brody, I, I'm not really sure even there because, you know, there's an argument to be made. I mean, obviously the Diamondbacks went to the World Series last year. You can't discount them. We all know how good the Dodgers are. I think they're, you know, the Padres I think are going to surprise some people this year. I think they picked up a lot of talent for Juan Soto, and you're going to see a lot of impact happening there. I think the Giants may have made all these moves just to finish fourth. Montgomery and Trevor Bauer are still out there. I think the Cardinals have interest in either one of them. <sighs> Man, I'll tell you, they'd be foolish not to. Why wouldn't they? But Especially, they talk about this offseason like they, they slayed the dragon, and it, it really confuses you. You know what? I, I think that they uh, they felt a lot of pressure to do things very quickly. You're and correct they, on that, they, and they, they grabbed clearly those, did in 48 yeah, they, hours. They grabbed a few innings eaters, and uh, now they're crossing their fingers for the rest of it. But uh, but you listen, they will be better. I mean, you know, everyone will be a year, a year more talented, and then so much of it is just going to boil down to health, as it always does. Very fortunate to be in the Central, aren't they? Uh, oh, yeah, my God, yeah. I mean, those are those, one of those teams, the question is, wh which one of them is going to back into the title? You know, uh, none of them seem to be out there aggressively trying to actually uh, capture the thing, mm -hmm. you know. But what do I know? Uh, Ed, they're looking for a legal uh, mind here on a, on a question that we were discussing. You might have heard it if you were listening 
earlier in our 7 o'clock hour. Morning, Ed. If you were playing in a golf tournament when you're required to show your handicap to enter the tournament, shouldn't you be required to show your handicap to enter the tournament? Uh, that's from Big Tuft, who's uh, sending that in. Well, I mean, how do you determine, like, what you're going to tell them? I mean, if well, I there's go there's an app. There... You enter your scores, and then it calculates your handicap. Really? Yeah. Well, how do we know you're entering your scores accurately? Oh, boy, what an honor system it is, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just saying that, you know, built into all this. First of all, I don't believe in the whole handicapping thing You do all. not? No, your skills are what they are. Doug, that's what you were mm -hmm. saying yesterday. If you're bragging about beating somebody when you were getting 15 pops or even three right. pops, is it really a brag? I, I don't mean, know how you shoot a 95 and the other guy shoots an 80 and you say, I, I won yeah, because of my listen, handicap. It's, it's, it's crap. <laughs> if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm playing basketball, do I get to stand on something that makes me a foot taller because I'm only like five to see seven? That. <laughs> like I mean, you know, uh, you are who you are in the sport. You don't get to equalize it. You know, you're a loser. You're, you know, <laughs> oh, which you're is speaking fine. to all of us right now. He looked me listen. dead in the eye when he said that. If Doug. you want to be a winner, play with people less <laughs> talented. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you want to get better, play with people more <laughs> talented. But don't convince yourself that you somehow beat them. Oh, here comes somebody who oh knows all about God. the handicap system. Ladies and gentlemen, is, on a home run. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm going to get up from here. No, you're fine. No, 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 I'm not. You, Look you at this. Have you ever heard of Gallery This Charge? No, this is standing August 2018, Bell Reef Country Club. Look at this. Ozzy, what's going on? How are you? I'm doing great. you know the wizard for so many years. Where's this back? Oh, the backflip is in here. So we're going to take Oh, yeah, the sorry off. about the trash can. It's... Hey, how's it going? And we were just uh, discussing uh, uh, the handicap system. Oh, oh no. What have you done, Iggy? It was not me. <laughs> <laughs> Iggy. You broke the studio. Uh -oh. Uh oh. No. The handicap system in the world of golf, uh, uh -oh. Wizard. That was the, that was the, the topic. This time to mention that we handle workers' compensation. <laughs> 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 Last time I saw Ozzy, he was making fun of me at Golf Galaxy. Remember that? Oh, that he had right? a club, and he yeah. said, you can't hit that club. I, I, I can't it. hit any of them. Uh, yeah, I did see you over there, didn't I? Yeah. Well, Doug was getting working? Yeah, no. He's, uh, he's... I was looking at a, at a used club, and Ozzy came up and said, you can't hit that. I said, uh, I know I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't buy it. <laughs> because of that? <laughs> Revenues of Golf like Galaxy. Like all of us who are trying to buy a game, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Doug, you can't buy a game. <laughs> I, I saw a meme the other day where it's two guys at a window. One said, new drivers for sale, and there's 50 people lined up, and the other said, golf lessons for sale, nobody there. Nobody. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants the club, but they don't want the practice and the, and the lesson. Ozzy, uh, congratulations on what you have going on here, and I see some of the product has been brought we're, in. Yeah, we gonna, we yeah what do we got going on here? Backflip. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I have a golf tournament every year for um, the president of PGA Reach, which introduces kids to the game and the business of golf. And um, our long-range goal is to hopefully build a nine-hole multi-recreational facility across from Herbert Hoover's Boys Club. Um, we finally gotten the land cleared and, and, and everything, so uh, we're starting our capital campaign to raise money to get that done. And through our golf tournament this year, we partnered with Beck Flavors uh, and Beverage Solutions here in town. So um, this is the culmination of, of a lot of hard work by a group of people here in St. Louis. It's a, it's a St. Louis project. We introduced a, a drink from Beck Flavors called the Backflip, which we call the Backflip. And people liked it so much they asked us where they could get it. And so we brought it to market yesterday, as a matter of fact, and, uh, and stuff. It's a grapefruit paloma and, and cherry lemonade. Nice, so, nice, New nice. venture, man. So with uh, vodka and uh, with tequila, Doug, yeah, if you want to take the edge off. Take this this edge could off. be like the next Arnold Palmer. Uh, you know, he mixed iced tea and yeah. lemonade and became a legend. You never know. You never yeah. know, Doug. So uh, it's one of those things that I think that people, um, they, they liked it so much that um, there was a lot of interest in it and, and stuff. And so it's been fun for me going through the process of making something like this happen. And part of the proceeds will also go to PGA Reach. So. You're, you're very involved with that. I, I think yeah. that's something that uh, people don't understand, perhaps, how involved you were with getting the PGA yeah. Championship here and PGA Reach. That is a real passion. It is, a, it is a passion, you know, and I think for me, when I retired in 96, you don't, you don't know, you know, what that next chapter was going to bring. And uh, so there, there's been a few things, and one of the other things we're going to talk about is the Ozzie Smith Center, which I've always looked for an alternative to be able to keep myself in shape to be able to do the things that I enjoy doing in life, and 
uh, with Jason and uh, the staff over there. You know, that's that's given people some some people their lives back. And so, um, you know, there are a lot of things that I, I got my, my my. There are a lot of balls in the air right now that are, that are happening, but. It's fun, and I enjoy it, and I keep myself busy. Tell our audience uh, what you have going on at the Ozzie Smith Center. Well, Jason, where are you? Here, here's right Jason. <laughs> Jason. I, my name's on the place, but it's the staff that, that, that makes it happen, and um, Jason is a, is a big part of that. All right, yeah, Jason. Just, uh, before I get into that, I just want to tell you all that uh, a friend of mine, Kyle Wren, Speaks so highly, you guys, and I had no idea. So I, I is he in prison? No, no, no. But no. So when when I, I found out we were going to be on here, I, I told him he was just so excited for us. So I've been watching some of your stuff just to get prepped. And anyway, so uh, here we are. But uh, we'll, we'll sign for him before he goes. There you go. Yeah. So uh, the uh, Ozzy Smith Center is uh, just uh, we call it the one stop shop to get back in the flipping game. So we have uh, I'm the chiropractor there. Um, we have physical therapy. We have a regenerative medicine medical department. Um, so just all non-surgical solutions. So if we can help you, uh, you know, avoid surgery and, and uh, go from there, that's that's what we want to do. Now, of course, on our, our new website that launched yesterday, there's a little portion there that I do mention that, uh, you know, some people do wait too long, you know, to take care of themselves. But at the same time, uh, I have to tell people that uh, I'm not the wizard. That's Ozzy. So there are limitations to even what we can do. So we do encourage people to, uh, you know, take care of themselves sooner than later and, and uh, get back in the flipping game. So Nice. There it is. The yeah. Ozzy Smith Center. OzzySmithCenter.com is is where you can uh, check it out and uh, and get yourself back in the flipping game, Doug. How about that? You like <laughs> yeah, that? Very nice. Ozzy, when you retired, I'm, I'm sure you could have retired to a beach in Hawaii somewhere. What's been your motivation to stay in St. Louis and get so involved in so many different ventures? Well, it's the people. And, uh, you know, I've always wanted to be a part of the community in which I live. And, uh, you know, since coming here in 1982, it, uh, it's the people that, 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 that keep you around. And, and it's a great place to raise a family and yeah. uh, had a couple businesses here, you know, so it's, it's kept me here in town. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure a lot of fans want to get your perspective on what you think of the uh, upcoming season. What do you think of the 2024 Cardinals? Well, I, it's not going to take much to be better than the 23 <laughs> season. <laughs> you know, it, like uh, it was disappointing. I, I mean, I think for Cardinal fans, you know, last year was one of those years that is something that we're not accustomed to here. You know, so I, I think that the guys understand that. Uh, the guys that wear the birds on the bat understand that, and I had a chance to go down to spring training, and I usually go down when the pitchers and catchers report mm -hmm. and spend a little time. And, um, you know, I think that they understand the importance of getting back on track this year. Um, you know, some of the acquisitions that we've made, you know, getting a sunny gray I think was very, very important because you're only going to go as far as your pitching takes you. Uh, we've got Lance Land back. Um, so, you know, if the pitching staff can stay healthy, um, you know, I see the guys working extremely hard knowing that this is a kind of a turning point um, for this organization. Yeah. You know, um, you know, we, we need to get back on track, and I think that they understand the importance of that. Yeah, you guys, uh, in 1990, and that t it seems like that was a good team and a good roster, but that team wound up finishing in, in last place. Yeah. And, yeah. and Whitey stepped down middle of the season. When you look back on that, that team with that roster that was close to winning the National League East the year before, what, what what was it? Injuries was. It? It's all it, it it all plays into it. There's some free agents. I yeah, think. free agency yeah. and 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 there are a lot of things that that go into, you know, um, the changing of the guard, you mm -hmm. know, so to speak. And um, you you go through those, but you try and avoid, you know, those too too many valleys. Right, right. Uh, and this organization has always been pretty pretty even keel. You know, um, we didn't win every year, but we were always competitive. And I think last year was one of those years where. We didn't feel that we were as competitive as we should have been, especially in this division, you know. So yeah. they're working hard to try and get get it back this year, and I don't know whether or not that'll be enough to win it all, but it should be a lot more entertaining. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you about, I know you're down in Jupiter, and you've uh, developed a rapport with Mason Wynn, right? Mm -hmm. What do you uh, think of him, the speed, the yeah, arm? Yeah, man, you defense? know, when people ask me, well, what do you, you know, what do you tell them? It's not about changing anything, because I think that at this point, he's here because of what he's capable of doing you know he's he's proven that he he could he could play in the big leagues so now it's a matter of just reinforcing the things that he already knows that hey i'm here because i deserve to be here and it's finding out whether or not they have the work the work ethic that it's going to take to get to the next level and he certainly has all the young players that they have down there have um, a great work ethic 
and they know that it's going to take some blood, some sweat, and some tears to be able to get to that next level. And, um, you know, now it's just a matter of allowing him to go out and play, make his mistakes, and hopefully not make the same mistake over and over. I was looking at defensive metrics all time of Major League Baseball players the other day, and they had you listed as the greatest defensive player at any position in the history of baseball. <laughs> Does that help you peacock around a little bit? Of fun? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, here That's again, a pretty good I, legacy. yeah, I wasn't. You know, I, I wasn't really a stat guy. I, I just I enjoyed what I did. I didn't take anything for granted, and it's the same thing that you know that that, that I tell the guys. You know, it's just enjoy what you do. Try and get the most out of it, and don't don't take anything for granted. You're always on. You're always auditioning for somebody. You know, so each and every day that you go out, if, it's, if you're going to practice for two or three hours, get the most out of those two or three hours that you're going to practice and know that when you leave there that you're, you gave it everything that you had that day. That didn't mean you win, but you gave it everything that you had that day. And when you look back, you'll have no regrets, you know. So, um, Doug, to answer your question, I, you know, I, I didn't start out saying, you know what, I'm going to have the... the, the the, the best statistics in the world. It was all about enjoying what I did, getting the most out of it, and, and realizing that uh, it's a real blessing to have had the opportunity to play for 19 years, and the last 15 were very, very special playing here in a place like St. Louis. Hey, and that pertained to your golf game, too, because you have taken your golf game from when you started. Are you just mm -hmm. uh, as passionate about that, getting better at it, or just having fun with it? I am, and um, it's, it's, it's the same approach. You know, I try and uh, try and hit something every day. Uh, hit a golf ball every day. You know, so. <laughs> it's, uh, you know I, I, I swing every day and uh, stuff. And it was the same way with with um, my baseball. You know, I took ground balls every day and um, I worked. I worked at it, and I know that I'm only going to get out of it what I put in it. Uh, we got to get a ruling from you here. We have okay. a, a tournament with uh, our listeners. Sixty-four person tournament. Okay. Match play. And uh, some of the players on the show have handicaps. Some do not. Some of the audience members. <laughs> some of the audience members. Uh, Iggy here in particular uh -huh. is a focal point, but the plowboy here, Ozzy and Doug, do not have no. uh, official uh -uh. gins. Uh -oh. um, uh -huh. what, 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 should, what, should we, what should we do about this? Uh -huh. You know, uh, I think you probably should send somebody out with them every day that they say they're going to play. Well, scouting mission. Is this like scouting. a judge? Or yes, and and and, and, like and let somebody keep you know let somebody keep track. Uh, Doug strokes gained the around strokes. the green. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah, I think that would probably be the best way to. What's your handicap, Ozzy? Golf. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good player, though, aren't you? I've, you know, pretty decent. I, I've gotten myself down to a four and no. and, and stuff, and it's hard to. To, to get lower than that because, you know, that, that just comes down to chipping and putting and, and stuff. And I don't know if I want to go any lower. I, I don't make any money as it is. Yeah, you know, four is you know, not a profitable spot it's to be. It's not very profitable, but, but that's being honest. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, and here again, it's just uh, trying, to, trying to chip away at it and, and stuff. I enjoy. I enjoy the, the, uh, the process. And when I say the process, I mean I enjoy the practicing part of it, you know, yeah. we're working it, digging it out of the dirt. And a lot of people don't like the process. And this is not a game that you can just wake up in the morning and somebody may be able to, Tiger may be able to do it, but uh, you just wake up and say, I'm going out and play, right. play today and, and play great. Mm -hmm. Doesn't happen that way. Best player you ever played with? Best player I've ever played with. You uh, played with Nicholas. Well, I, I got to play with Jack. Yeah. I got to play with Tom Watson. I've got to play with Annika Sorenstam, uh, David Duvall. Um, and they're all great players. Um, Nancy Lopez, wow. who still hits it well. Um, you know, Jack doesn't hit it far, but still hits it straight. All right. So straight works. That's straight works, yeah. Doug. Yeah. Straight yeah. works, Doug. Yeah. 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 Don't hit it far, but hit it straight. Okay. Do you play in the Tahoe event? That. Do you play in the Tahoe event every year? I did uh, for 11 years, and then you wake up one morning, you don't get an invitation anymore. <laughs> oh, so, no. So, so that's happened to a lot of guys. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I was I was out there for 11 years. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it 
Something happened. <laughs> Something happened. I wonder what that was. Uh, we'll get you out of here. Backflip right. is the name of the product. Uh, congratulations on the launch of that. And Ozzy Smith Center, the Ozzy Smith Center online at ozzysmithcenter.com. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hall of Famer, the great Ozzy Smith in Woo! studio with us here. Thank Let's you. Uh, thank take you. a commercial break. Come back with more of The Morning After. Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPN TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here with a great TMA sponsor, and that is Longo Biggs Injury Law Firm. And you may hear a bunch of out of state law firms advertising here and there, all over on billboards, and so on and so forth. But the thing is, Oftentimes, their goal is to just settle and move on, and that's not what you guys do. Yeah, this is C.D. Longo, and you hear us talking a lot about maximizing the value of cases, but what does that actually mean? Well, as Tim said, there's lots of personal injury lawyers in St. Louis, and everyone handles cases differently. We focus on getting the highest dollar amount for your injuries, not just getting a resolution quickly. We're constantly tracking all the settlements and verdicts in the area. This helps us advise our clients on whether a settlement offer is too low. And if the amount of compensation being offered is too low, we are happy to file lawsuits and proceed to trial to ensure our clients receive an amount that is fair. Visit our website or Google us at Longo Biggs Injury Law. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Chow Chow on the Hill is your one-stop shop for all your pet supplies. As soon as you walk through their doors, you and your pet are considered family and treated with superior service and personalized attention. Jessica is the owner and is a certified pet nutritionist and impassioned about educating her clients on the product that will keep your pets happy and healthy. My favorite part about Chow Chow is in connection with All Paws Safe Haven, an organization that helps shelter animals find forever homes. To learn more about Chow Chow, visit CIAOCHOWSTL.com or stop by and tell them Plowsy sent you. In business since the 50s, Collier and Thompson are known for kitchen and bathroom remodels, but they do so much more. If it's an interior remodeling job, Collier and Thompson can probably help. Basements, wine rooms, man caves, bars, accent rooms, fireplace walls, office, you name it. No need to visit five to ten showrooms when Collier and Thompson provides all your needs in their showroom on Manchester Road in Baldwin. Come home to quality with Collier and Thompson. Let them bring your dream remodel to reality. CollierandThompson.com. The Illinois Recovery Center is dedicated to providing precise and authentic care to those seeking help and treatment. Recovery, it's not just a goal, it's a transformative journey. At Illinois Recovery Center, you'll find an unwavering commitment to provide the support, guidance, and personalized care you or your loved one needs to rediscover a life filled with purpose, strength, and lasting renewal. If you or someone you know wants more information about the Illinois Recovery Center, please call 888-472-9559 or visit IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. <laughs> It's the heart of March and everything's green. The bar is as busy as you've ever seen. Everyone's Irish and you are too. When you tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. When the dry cleaner's lost your only green shirt and getting pinched by your friends is starting to hurt. At this point, there's nothing else you can do except I tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. It's St. Patrick's Day, so what do you do? You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. Tullamore Jew Irish Whiskey, imported by William Grant and Sons, Inc. Biggie's Restaurant and Bar has been a staple of the community for over 30 years and is serving your favorites like a steak sandwich, waffle fries, and so much more. It's not just the food that's rocking. With a full bar and patio, Biggie's is the perfect spot for lunch, dinner, and a little laughter. Biggie's Original Hours are back. Open 11 a.m. till midnight, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And 11 a.m. till 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Check out the full menu at Biggie'sRestaurant.com and stop in today. This is the one. Honey, I think you're right. This house has everything we've ever dreamed of. A huge master bedroom, an open kitchen, and a backyard with a fire pit and built-in grill. I'm in love. I can't believe it. Finally, our dream home. It's absolutely perfect for us. We owe our realtor big time. No, you don't. We're just doing our job. At the Jeff Lottman Group, helping you find your dream home is our top priority, bringing people and properties together. To get started, call us at 314-406-8911 or visit us online at jefflottman.com. 
Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here with James Carlton of the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency. James, I love getting emails from listeners who support the sponsors. Got one from a client of yours who switched, and you immediately saved him $1,000, and it meant the world to him. The area that we're really, really having an impact on people's finances are people with drivers under the age of 25. We're seeing material savings for these types of clients, hundreds, if not even thousands of dollars per year. James Carlton, Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency, 314-961-4800, or go online at Carlton Insurance. Temperatures are finally warming up here in St. Louis, and while that means more fun in the sun, it could also spell disaster for your lawn. Rain equals spring weeds, and now is the best time to get ahead of it. Green Envy has been here in St. Louis for more than a decade, servicing and treating lawns just like they would their very own. Crabgrass can lay dormant for years until the conditions are right, and the massive amounts of moisture we've had is sure to wake up even the oldest crabgrass seeds. Green Envy only uses products that have been formulated for Missouri soil, weather conditions, and turf types, not national generic products that are insufficient and ineffective. Let the experts at Green Envy help you choose the best treatment program for your lawn this season. Phone lines are open 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and Saturday 9 to 1 to take your calls and answer questions. Call Green Envy today at 636-757-1600 or visit GreenEnvyLawns.com and make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood. The choice of a lawyer is important and shouldn't be based on an ad. If you're seriously hurt in an accident, you'll want all the money you deserve. That's called justice. But there wouldn't be lawyers if justice was easy. No, justice is not easy. It's fought for and it's won. At Brown and Crouppen, we fight for justice every day. If you want some, call 222-2222. Because at Brown and Crouppen, justice is our business. Hey, if you like the morning after, check out Balloon Party on 101 ESPN. HD1, by the way. It's sports talk with Tim McKernan and Ashton Jackson from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. each weekday, right after the morning after. It's the worst name show in the history of radio, but the content's pretty good. So check it out on 101 ESPN or get the podcast on the TMA app. K-E-N-T HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. It's the Brown and Crouppen Morning After. Welcome back. CMA presented to you by Brown and Crouppen, fresh off of a segment with Ozzie Smith in studio. Doug, talking it over with the Wizard. And Ed Herman is kind enough to stick around to, uh, I had to, to. review the conversation. What would you think? I, I, let me tell you, I'm, a, I'm and I'm not just saying that because he was here. I, I really think that Ozzie Smith is a legitimate St. Louis hero. I agree you know, with you I mean, 100%. He is so sir. invested in this city. You know, and it's it's not because he's looking for the accolades and the mm-hmm. fame. I mean, I'm sure it's nice to have people revere you. But um, like he said, I mean, you know, I don't know if people realize how lucky we are uh, that we can hold on to a legend who stays part of the community and really becomes your ambassador. I mean, he's about as good as they get. I mm-hmm. agree wholeheartedly, and I almost think that, and I think I've said this relatively recently, that I think... I, I don't think necessarily the public does, but perhaps the media, I don't know, take for granted how great he was as an athlete, but how even better he is as an ambassador for the city. And we got done with the interview, and I think you were probably still in studio, yeah. and he said, hey, I forgot to mention we're doing this turn two with the Wizards, so I want to make sure I mention it. You have two available dates. Yeah, you were talking with him about it. Friday, uh, May 31st, or Friday, August 2nd, go to cardinals.com slash Ozzy. And it is a chance to go down and play at Bush Stadium with you, Ozzie Smith. An hour session on the field at Bush Stadium. Yeah, he said you get to turn a couple of double plays with How him. About that? You know, he'll flip a tee, he'll flip mm-hmm. a he'll throw that? it over first. Let me tell you, there's no way in the world I'm not going to go and do that. <laughs> no, really? There you I go. Mean, you play a little second base. Well, let me tell you. You know, and I think I think Derek Jeter had something to do with the Turn Two Foundation when it first got started. So you know, maybe it's it's grown amongst Hall of Fame shortstops. But can you imagine, you want to talk about life experiences, you want to put on the list of things you've done, show up at some party and these conversations come up? Mm -hmm. I mean, just when you told me you hit a home run off of Tom Seaver, and then I saw the video of it, Mm -hmm. I thought, what an amazing thing to carry around with you in your memory the rest of your life. I can't imagine turning a double play with Ozzy Smith, the greatest fielder Mm -hmm. in the history of baseball. And you know what? He'll never be passed on that list because artificial turf is gone. Mm. And they'll never be able to have metrics 
that will show you what he was able to do. Like, nobody will even have a chance to enter his realm. Mm -hmm. uh, what would that feel like to go through your life knowing you hit a homer off a Seaver and you turned to double play with Ozzie Smith? Like you sweet. did the former. Yeah. Well, if you're too young to remember Ozzie Smith as a player, you have to go on YouTube and, and watch some of his career. He made plays. You just can't believe anyone could have mm -hmm. made it. You, you, you can't. If people, the kids don't know artificial turf, and you remember, it was. it's hard as a rock. Mm -hmm. The ball would come off of there with, with speed that... You know, it got faster off of the turf, not slower. Right. You know, mm -hmm. we're used to grass slowing a ball down. It's like playing on concrete, and 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 the ground that he would cover with that. Yep. Yeah, kids, go on YouTube. It's yeah, what you're doing best. anyway. Just watch something decent this time. Yeah, the uh, the barehanded play in San Diego, I think, is the one that I go. How in the world? But the one where he's jumping over Kurt Ford, not Kurt mm -hmm. Flood, Kurt Ford, right. running away from the infield. I mean, there were just so many of them, and and you would see the runners at first base turn around and go, How in the hell am I out? You know, they couldn't believe that right. that ball was caught and and thrown over to first. No, but between no. Ozzie Smith. And Jim Edmonds and Nolan Arnato and Scott Rowland and Yadier Molina, Keith Hernandez. We really have seen some oh, of the premier defensive yeah, players in me, the history of the game. Let me say this. I, I will go further than that. Obviously, Ozzy, we can put him number one at shortstop. And you know I'm not full of it because several weeks ago we talked about Jim Edmonds. Mm -hmm. And I made the declaration that he was the best fielding center fielder of my lifetime. And I've seen mm -hmm. Andrew Jones and Ken Griffey Jr. And obviously, I'm not old enough to have seen Willie Mays, but I've seen the highlights. Edmonds the best. And I don't think anybody... I don't even think there's a second name in the conversation at first base for then Keith Hernandez. Uh, you want to see highlights. Go watch his highlights. He's made plays over there. He could have been a third baseman, uh, but for that he's a lefty, just with the range that he had over there. Mm -hmm. So that's three right there that may have been the very best at their position. Mm -hmm. pretty good, too. Yeah, and then you, yeah, yeah, my dad will talk about Kurt Flood, but he still said Edmonds. Edmonds doesn't think he's going to get in the Hall of Fame. He was, I, I mean, well, I, I think he's. I, I saw Edmonds actually. I ran. I I didn't. I would say I ran into him. He didn't see me. Uh, he was sitting at uh, 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 Brick Brick Tops in Frontenac at the bar. But he was talking to people. I, I didn't want to bother the man. I was going to use your name, too. <laughs> He's a very nice guy. I he would have been happy to see him. Is that, you know, I've, very I've met nice him at the, uh, at the Pujols Family um, Foundation, yeah. uh, their annual fundraiser. And, and uh, Jim Edmonds used to be a, a pretty much a fixture at that every year. So, mm -hmm. you know, at those, you know, you, you know, they expect to take pictures with the fans and whatnot. But I'm still like... One of those fans that's sort of in awe when you know yeah. you run into people in Paul. I never mm -hmm. know what to say to anybody. Yeah, you know that's hard. What, what is the right approach? And you're a famous man. Doug. Yeah, people Doug, have I mean, seen Doug, you on television you, for I think years. Maybe you just say, I, "I really appreciate your work." You know, just, I don't know how anyone could could have a problem with that. It's nice know, to meet you. I really appreciated your work. Is isn't isn't the worst when somebody says a neutral statement and you have no idea how to respond to it? Like, oh, I saw you on TV. Like, what do you say yeah. to that? <laughs> Did anybody come up and say? I still have people come up and say, "Hey, I watch you every night." Say, so you do not. I've been gone two years. <laughs> I, 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 I tell them, but we, I used to record you on VHS, and I watch it every night, and I'm obsessed. I have one guy come up and say, "You know what? I've always really hated you." And I said, "Really? Why is that?" <laughs> He said, because you would do Sports Sunday, and it meant that Monday morning was almost here, and oh. as soon as you popped up, I started dreading the work week coming up. It's like the 60 minutes clock for people. I, I guess. I'm glad yeah. that you asked him for clarification and you didn't just punch him, because that would not have been what he was Well, the expecting. thing with local news, if you don't like somebody, you just turn the channel, watch somebody else. So the people that really hate you don't, don't know you to hate you. Yeah. As opposed, if you're the play-by-play -play guy, that's the only place you can get it. So there are people that don't like the play-by-play -play guys because there's nowhere else to go. Yeah. Like local news or a radio show, if you don't like somebody, just listen to yeah, something else. True, but what if they like everybody else on the station but you? So <laughs> well, they've, made, they've made a decision that they're going to watch it because they really yeah. love everybody. They tolerate you. Yeah. And then when they see you, they can't help but let you know, like, you're the bane of my television watching. <laughs> I'm sure there was a lot of that going on. You know, <laughs> I don't, what pisses I don't me either. off is that... You know, I wake up every morning, I feel like I'm 80, I look like I'm 90. And you look at Ozzy Smith, he looks like he's 40. Can I tell you something? He looked fabulous. I mean, he, could, he looks like he could still play. I ran into him at a fundraising event maybe six years ago. I think he looked younger now. 
whatever he's doing there. The the, Smith uh, Center, yeah. I think he's drinking this back. <laughs> <laughs> In all seriousness, I, I, I guess we're not allowed to drink it on air. So, so oh, is that right? Is that the actual pun? I, I, I have no idea. Well, he's I, turned, I, he turned 70 this year. I didn't realize that. I just wanted to look really? it up. He turned That's 70 something. this year. How about Jesus. That? I don't even know if I'm going to make it to 70, and this guy God. looks like he could still get it done. <laughs> are, are we? Are, do we not want to? Just do we not want to do a, a, a taste test? I don't know that there are any rules in radio. Certainly HD two. I don't. HD two is a free for all. Do about whatever you want to do nowadays. I mean, I, you know, it, it looks like you got some extra cups over there. I don't know if those were uh, used. I can go grab some cups if you want to. <laughs> do we want? Uh, is that not allowed? I mean, people. I do. I, do th- I think there is actually a regulation. Is there a rule? Well, that's a shame. I, I what I will do because at least there used to be. I mm. feel compelled to. Uh, I will buy some in the store. I will try some yeah. on my own. Yeah, this is the kind of thing and I, I, the golf I will. Course. I will give a full report <laughs> on my next go. Oh, there you go. Oh, that'd but be nice. Let me tell you this, this is a first a well designed can. I don't know who did this, but the using, slender can is a nice feel. Yeah, and yeah. just using the the baseball stitches, the image of Ozzy, and that you know that position that we all know so well mm-hmm. uh, from you know screenshot and yep. moments at the that peak the of best. his backflip. Yeah. It's, it's always really one of the best branding. moments of the year. Opening day when he would run out and do the backflip. It was one of the best moments of the year. Oh, it, it give you chills. <laughs> yeah. You know, what I didn't want to tell him, and this is where St. Louis has to band together and give this a shot. Not if you're an alcoholic. I don't want you to fall off the wagon just to support this product, but I do think people should, you know, should support this. The money goes to a cause. It's not just going into somebody's pocket. I just know from years of watching Shark Tank that the beverage space is very very challenging. It's probably the toughest shelf space apparently in the oh, is that in right? the store. According to Kevin O'Leary. Oh yeah. I don't know. I mean maybe he's Mr. trying Wonderful? to get a good deal. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Wonderful, but mm-hmm. they do. I don't know if I think a lot of people watch Shark Tank has been on a long time and they always say the beverage space so competitive and I don't know how much cachet, you know, he carries outside of St. Louis. So I think they're going to have to heavily locally distribute this and I think they're going to rely on us as his fellow St. Louisans. To support the product. Oh, I, I was afraid you were going to say the beverage space is difficult, and for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm out. No, I, I, I think that this is something that, uh, you know, he's given a lot back to this community. I think mm-hmm. this is something that the community could do to give a little something back and help support the cause. It's only a, a pure good. Yeah. I'm going to try the cherry uh, lemonade. Not today, not on the air. That's right. But that is, uh, that's going to be delicious. Yeah, it does sound good to try that. So now, if you couldn't have Ozzy Smith on your team, oh, who would you, who would you, who's, who's the next best shortstop? The next best you? shortstop in oh, your Ozzie. lifetime, though. Don't go back to Honus Wagner. We all act like we saw the guy. <laughs> yeah. We didn't see the guy. We saw the back of his baseball card. I guess when you combine defense and hitting, it'd be tough to beat Cal Ripken. The guy who's going to yeah. be there every day. Yeah, I mean you can't Pitch beat twenty five or thirty home runs. Two time MVP, loyal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you can't go wrong there. See, I love Jimmy Rollins. Jimmy Rollins. Jimmy Rollins, Jimmy Rollins also a former MVP. I know, it's somebody who I watched. I mean, I didn't watch yeah. too much of Cal Ripken, kind of young there. You know, say, d- defensively and offensively, and kind of had that swagger, that flash. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you couldn't take Jeter. Yeah, that would that'd be my pick, of course. I don't like Derek Jeter, but yeah, he's really, really good. Why don't you like him? Yeah, yeah. why don't you like Jeter? I didn't know that. No, I'm just not a fan. You don't like the inside-out swing? Yeah, I don't know if I love his swing, but I do love the moments he's had, the yeah. diving into the, the stands. It's just not my cup one. of tea, but yeah, he's a... Let me tell you, the diving in the stands, that was the part... Yeah, that was part, though, you had to have watched that whole game to really appreciate what the significance of, of that play was. Because that game went back and forth between the Red Sox and the Yankees. I think it was July of 2004. And it was a, it was a phenomenal. It was one of the greatest regular season games I've ever seen in history. And in that game, every single player on both rosters got into the game. All the offensive oh, players, right? except for one, on the Red Sox, because he was hurt. Maybe it was no more Garcia Parra. And everyone else was playing that game like it was Game Seven of the World Series. And Jeter going in the stands was in such stark contrast to the shortstop that the Red Sox had. They look over at their bench, and there's Nomar, the one guy not in the mix. And then there's Jeter with the bloody chin coming out of the stands in a regular season game that really didn't even mean that much, except it was a game and he wanted to win it. It wasn't too far after that that the Red Sox made the big trade and got rid of Nomar and wound up 
you know, that was a catalyst that, that led them to ultimately win the World Series that year and break their curse. I think it goes back to that game. And I think that moment wow. of watching Jeter do what he does and then the reality that Nomar, as great of a player as he was in his healthy years, he just wasn't the guy anymore. He wasn't the guy that was going to take Boston to the title. And when they traded him midseason, it changed everything. I did not remember, Ed, that oh. he was on the 2004 Red Sox. He was only for the first half of the year. How and then that, that was the year they dumped him, I believe, at the deadline. Hmm. And then they went on to win it. Then they won it all. Do you consider A. Rod a shortstop or third baseman? You know what? I, you know, I, as because I saw most of his play at third because I'm a Yankee fan. I, I st when I envision him, he's standing on the hot corner. That said, you know, I mean, most of his greatness was really at shortstop. And uh, the two things I remember about him at shortstop, and you can look it up if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe he was one home run shy of passing Ripken for the most home runs ever from the shortstop position. And when he went to the Yankees, of course, he went over to third base because Jeter was at short. He spent the rest of his career never never catching that record. He, he would have gotten it if he'd have just played mm -hmm. it short a little bit. Um, so that was kind of nice to see. I, I know Arod gets a bad rap in a lot of areas, but knowing that you know that that little personal success obviously wasn't something that that weighed on his uh, process. I remember, remember A Rod during that time. Remember the big talk was him going to Boston. Right, I'm he was technically traded you know, to Boston. Yeah. I'm always curious about how that would have went. He would have looked sick in a Red Sox jersey. Probably would have played short. I don't know if anything would have been different. He only won what one title with New York. Uh, he won a title in New York in 09, but but it, where, where things would have been different, I mean, look, in the multiverse, Lord knows what would have happened. I mean, the Red Sox would not have had Manny Ramirez. You know, that, that was their backup plan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they traded for A-Rod. The deal got voided by the Players Association. The Yankees swooped in and, you know, uh, traded away Soriano to get A-Rod. And the Red Sox pivoted and, and locked in Manny Ramirez from the Indians for that really long mm. deal. $20 million a year, which at the time was a, a ton. Speaking of, of breaking through records, and I don't want to obviously you don't ask Ozzy about it, but if memory serves, was he the first guy in baseball to crack the $2 million a year I believe plane? so. I believe so. That was a big deal when he got mm -hmm. there. Yeah, I mean, you know, amazing. I was still living in New York, and I remember that being huge. Of course, yeah. back then you sit there and go, is, is any player worth All right. $2, two million, million dollars a year? Yeah. What yeah. insanity is this? I think Cesar Cedeno was the first million dollar a year player. Is, is that, that right? true? Really? Now, if that's kind of true, that is a great trivia question. I think he might have been. It, Doug. I don't know why that came into my head, but that's that's how I remember it. And even then, that was... Well, it used to be, you know, going way back. You made a hundred thousand. Uh, Nolan Ryan, per this. Oh, that's not as good. Per the that. Baseball yeah. Hall of Fame. That's not oh. as exciting of an answer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you expect Nolan Ryan. To there make was a time when Sedania was the best player, the best player going for a year some or two. Money. in '79. You, you know, I, I think you know, in, in my favorite stat on Nolan Ryan, I believe, and you could look this up too. We all know he has the most no hitters in history by far. You know, he's got seven compared to four uh, for Koufax. He also has the most one hitters in the history of baseball with a dozen. He also has the most two hitters. He also has the most three hitters. And he might also have the most four hitters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just insane. And, j and to pitch to age, what, 47? Yeah. When I mean, most of them are breaking down now at 25? You know, and if you go online and look at him throughout the first pitch subsequent to his retirement, and he was still putting it at a speed that, you know, was enviable mm -hmm. for for major leaguers. Just no, a he genetic was, freak. He was something else, mm -hmm. and yet you know never won a Cy Young award. Have you seen that uh, documentary of him on Netflix? No, what I didn't even know they had. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. He talked about when he was with the Mets and struggled, couldn't find home plate, but threw a hundred miles an hour. The Mets grew frustrated with him, yeah. and this was in an era when they didn't even have a pitching coach. So he went to the, got traded to the Angels where they were one of the teams that happened to have a pitching coach, and the pitching coach says, you're falling off to the first base side on your delivery. Come more straight to home plate. He did that and was fixed. Isn't that amazing? And immediately, How about that? immediately became one but of the best know, pitchers at, of all time. And on it, then, then we're all better off for it, because if that was never going to happen with the Mets, strangely enough, though, his only World Series ring is with the 69 Mets. Mm -hmm. Went the rest of his career, nothing. Yeah. I think his 1973 season uh, with the uh, Angels is maybe the best season a pitcher's ever pitched in his career and not won the Cy Young Award. Right. Jim Palmer, I think, uh, was on his little streak at the time. 
But you look statistically at what Nolan Ryan did, and, and I believe it was 1973 when he had uh, 383 strikeouts. Yeah. Which, I mean, think about that, folks. 383 <laughs> strikeouts in a yeah. regular season. That doesn't count any postseason. That is insane. Mm-hmm. Did Cy Young's stats of innings pitched is insane. Is 7,300. <laughs> I think back then they just kind of threw the nice. ball up there. Yeah, you know what? He would throw both ends of a doubleheader, complete yeah. games. Uh, you it must know have that. been like batting practice because they had a softball. They must have just thrown 60 mile an hour. Here you go. It's over Dude, the plate. He was it, 35 just, throwing 390 innings. Mm-hmm. You know, it just shows you that owners have always been cheap. They just find different ways to, to do it. They're like, just run him out there. He can just keep throwing it. God, several 30-plus win seasons. Like, that to me, like, baseball, yeah. that got to be at its peak right there. Well, you see, I think what he finished with 511 uh, 511 wins. wins. Yeah, that's the that's the record. Nobody will ever come close no. to it. Nobody, nobody will get within 150 wins of it, no but, matter what But happens. if you're just out there basically throwing batting practice... That that would explain the longevity of it. It would, but if he was just throwing batting practice, his ERA you would think would be a lot higher. I mean, he must have been throwing somewhat effectively. I, 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 you would think. You know, now here's here's an interesting little factoid for your for your fans. You know, a lot of people wonder if he was so great and they named the pitching award after him, why was he not in the first class of the Hall of Fame? Where there were other pitchers, Walter Johnson made mm-hmm. it in the first class. Christy Mathewson made it in the first class. Cy Young did not get in on that first class. And people point to that as if to say, you know, he wasn't as good as Walter Johnson. As Chris. Do any of you know why Cy Young was not in the first class? No, was it because know. he couldn't make it? He couldn't get there on time? No, 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 no. Because he didn't have to for the voting. You know, he was still pitching? No, no. It was because um, the instructions the voters had been given were based on evaluating what they had done in their respective centuries that they did the primary part of their work. Cy Young, half of his work was done in the 1800s. And half of his work was done in the 1900s, and there was confusion amongst the voters as to whether or not they were supposed to consider his entire career or just the portion that took place in the century that they were evaluating. Oh. And as such, he misses the cut, whereas Walter Johnson and Christy Mathewson, all of their stats were the, you know, in the 1900s. So it was very easy to see all of, of their numbers, or at least the lion's share of their stats. Doug Cy Young, 162-game average season, 20 wins and 30 complete games. <laughs> That's incredible. That's but it. that, that means that, incredible, that, that that means he was getting 10, 10 complete losses a year. Too. Well, but that said, relief, yeah, I think that that's the reason then. behind it. Of course, they corrected that, and he got in on uh, in the second that's year. Insane, but uh, no, they didn't actually all get the, the actual Hall of Fame. The museum uh, and the hall didn't open until nineteen thirty nine. The Hall of Fame started in nineteen thirty six. It wasn't until they had four full classes that they actually opened the museum and had that ceremony. And there's that famous photograph that. Mm-hmm. Has like all of this, yeah. uh, the first four classes together, mm-hmm. minus Ty Cobb, who was there and shows up in other pictures, but would not pose in the picture with all of. Is the Is that other right? Papers. Yeah, they don't. It's a shame because it's probably the most historic uh, picture taken. Yeah. Ba- if people saw it online, they would recognize the picture immediately. Uh, it's you know Babe Ruth. Right, and, I can you know, picture that. Yeah. Over Alexander and Tris Speaker and everybody in the first four classes. Oh, that is awesome. You've been there, no doubt, right? To oh Cooperstown. yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I've been there a couple of times. I went for the induction in '14, and uh, let me tell you, that's magical. If you haven't been up there, that's why. Even my thoughts on the steroid players, it cha- my my philosophies on that changed a lot before I had gone to an induction ceremony compared to. To after and now they've evolved even more. Now I'm in a totally different place. But before I went to the Hall of Fame for the induction in 14, I was in that camp that was like, you know what, I, you know, it's you got to judge people in the era that they played in. Everybody's stats were affected whether they used or didn't use because they were being driven in or they had a pitch to a guy. And I was just like, just 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 judge them on on what they did on the field and and that's it. And then when I was there and I was watching the parade. And all of these guys are coming down, and Hank Aaron is there, and Willie Mays is there, and Whitey Ford is there, and Sandy Koufax is there, and Yogi Berra. And all of a sudden, I just had this wave of this whole thing would feel so off, so awkward, if in the middle of all of these legends, all of a sudden came Manny Ramirez, Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, and uh, Sammy Sosa. And I just feel like, you know what? This, this wouldn't feel like this. It wouldn't feel magical like this. This felt magical. That would have felt off. It would have felt tainted. I, I, it, wasn't, it wasn't an intellectual thought mm-hmm. on my part. 
But from an emotional standpoint, I just had a realization that it just was going to feel wrong. Now, I also noticed that in the museum, the history of baseball is perfectly well captured. They have a huge area dedicated to the steroids era. They have plenty of artifacts from A-Rod and all the other players. So they're represented in the history. But the gallery where the plaques are, that felt like holy sacred ground. And I went in there and I said, you know what? No, I, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with it. Now, 10 years have passed. Mm -hmm. I've evolved a little bit more into the camp that says, you're not going to tell me that there aren't already four or five guys that have been put in in recent years that could have just as easily been kept out for the same reasons. I won't say names because I don't think it's fair since I have no proof. But you've all heard the stories and heard the names. Once you've kind of broken through that, I just don't know where to draw the line anymore. You know? Mm -hmm. Where do you draw it? Steroid era deserves to be in, man. Like, they, I mean, early, mid-90s, baseball was kind of dying on a vine. They brought the absolute entertainment factor to it, and say whatever you want, but they say baseball. McGuire Sosa, the bonzes, the entertainment value that came along with it, seeing 480-yard bombs, it's what the fans wanted. Major, Major League Baseball made billions off of it, and now they're poo-pooing it and not showing love to them. So, I, I, I don't I don't like the Hall of Fame for that reason, for sure. Hmm. I mean, that's a valid perspective. You can't, you can't not acknowledge that that's... I mean, those are fair thoughts that he shared. There's truth to everything you just said. Um, I don't know uh, from, um, you know, morally if that if that's automatically justified simply yeah. because people well, benefited from it. I don't know if it makes it right. I will say that it is odd, and I, I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, that the baseball writers vote for the Hall of Fame. The baseball writers also vote every year for the year-end awards. They had no problem electing Bonds uh, MVP, you know, three, four times after they already knew that he was juiced. They had no problem casting a vote for for that, but then they won't cast a vote later on. And yeah, I, I don't know what the difference between that is. Doug, yeah. you look like you've got some real thoughts on the subject. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? I think I would put him in with an asterisk on the plaque that he was caught up in the steroid. I don't know how you want to word that. But just mention that, that he tested positive at some point. Put him in. You can't deny the numbers. You, you can't deny that they were still the greatest players of their era. But I, I think they probably belong in, again, with that asterisk explaining that that was also part of their career. Don't you think that, that, that they hurt um, some of the resumes of players that would have otherwise gotten oh, yeah. a lot more? I mean, sure. Fred McGriff, I don't think, would have had to wait for the veterans to put him in if his 493 regular season home runs had been seen in an era mm -hmm. where, you know, people weren't hitting 600 and 700. You know, or how many would Hank Aaron have hit if he was juiced up? Yeah, well, you know, they had their own stuff in that era, too. Even those guys, you know, they're nice enough to at least admit that they have no idea what they would have used and what they what wouldn't they have used. Yeah. They don't play themselves as saints. And, you know, they, they, they and people have always done what they could to gain, you know, a competitive edge. You know, there were plenty of players in the 60s on the greenies and, you know, just keeping their, their energy up, mm -hmm. so... It would have been hard not to, especially if you're a minor leaguer on the verge of making it, and you see the guys in the majors doing it, and you're thinking, well, maybe instead of 10 home runs, maybe I'd hit 20 if I took this stuff, and I'd make $10 million a year. Sure, where's oh, the needle? Let me, listen, I'm a person who, uh, you know, listen, we've decided where to draw a line, and it's kind of arbitrary. You say all of these things you can have over here, and we're going to say that all of these things are fine, and then all of these things over here we're going to say are not fine. And, and, of course, the line they're going to draw is they're going to say, well, we don't want people to do something that's unsafe or unhealthy for their body. Um, so you, you try the best you can. But the science is always ahead of everything. And to your point, I mean, if you're a light-hitting guy with a little speed and you think, man, if I can just get double-digit home runs, I'm on a major league roster and my life is set. Mm -hmm. I have, Listen, I'm no moralist. I would have done it. I would have done it. Yeah, you know. I think most I mean, people would have. Listen, yeah. people went out with my weight loss. People gave me a jump start with some of those injectables. I did it in a second. Yeah. And I, I didn't care what, you know. And for all I know, ten years from now, society will judge all of that harshly and rewrite the rules after the fact, like mm -hmm. society has a tendency to like to do. Yeah. is change all the rules 10 years later and then try to hold you responsible for it. <laughs> Decision you know, made in that moment. Yeah, which is why I was always kind when it came to McGuire. I felt like he, for him for sure, 
uh, played at a time where everybody reaped the benefit. It wasn't even fully technically against the rules. And then, you know, the rules changed and the, 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 the psyche changed, you know. Everybody all of a sudden became a moralist, like mm-hmm. anybody in their life is getting it right. I mean, geez. Uh, Ed, we always enjoy the conversation. Yeah. Great to have Ozzie Smith in, and you got a chance to talk it over with the Wizard as well. What a uh, wonderful segment here. Uh, Ed Herman, Brown and Crouppen, and uh, Ozzie Smith earlier on the program. If you want a podcast, we'll take a commercial break. Come back with the Schaefer Door Company, 9 o'clock hour. This is TMA, presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Uh, thanks, Ed. When we think of a real estate agent, we think of somebody simply selling our home or finding us a new one. I mean, they're all the same, right? Okay, here's the comps. We'll take some pics, we'll post them, and uh, hey, yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you, okay? A home is life-changing, and your real estate agent should reflect that. Honesty, integrity, and someone who will go above and beyond to make your dreams come true. The Jeff Lottman Group with Compass Realty. We're different because you're different. We want what you want. Experience the difference today at JeffLottman.com. Bringing people and properties together. The choice of a lawyer is important and shouldn't be based on an ad. After a serious car accident, people have two questions. Why me and what now? Well, no one knows why you, but I'm Terry Crouppen, and my law firm, Brown & Crouppen, sure can help with the what now. Car repairs, medical bills, lost wages, pain and suffering. We're Brown & Crouppen, and we've got all those answers. All you have to do is call. 222-2222. College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Illinois. It's sports betting the way it should be. Experience big app bets with high betting limits, tight money line splits, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all the March action at CircaSports.com. If you or someone you know have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER or text ILGAMB to 833-234. Temperatures are finally warming up here in St. Louis, and while that means more fun in the sun, it could also spell disaster for your lawn. Rain equals spring weeds, and now is the best time to get ahead of it. Green Envy has been here in St. Louis for more than a decade, servicing and treating lawns just like they would their very own. Crabgrass can lay dormant for years until the conditions are right, and the massive amounts of moisture we've had is sure to wake up even the oldest crabgrass seeds. Green Envy only uses products that have been formulated for Missouri soil, weather conditions, and turf types, not national generic products that are insufficient and ineffective. Let the experts at Green Envy help you choose the best treatment program for your lawn this season. Phone lines are open 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and Saturday 9 to 1 to take your calls and answer questions. Call Green Envy today at 636-757-1600 or visit GreenEnvyLawns.com and make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood. In business since the 50s, Callier and Thompson are known for kitchen and bathroom remodels. But they do so much more. If it's an interior remodeling job, Callier and Thompson can probably help. Basements, wine rooms, man caves, bars, accent rooms, fireplace walls, office, you name it. No need to visit five to ten showrooms when Collier and Thompson provides all your needs in their showroom on Manchester Road in Baldwin. Come home to quality with Collier and Thompson. Let them bring your dream remodel to reality. CollierandThompson.com. TMA listeners have a lot to think through financially. Saving for retirement and college while also paying bills and enjoying life along the way. Call Mark Hanna. Mark works with you to design a strategy to do your finances right. It's a straightforward approach that starts with a 15-minute phone call to discuss your needs. Visit evergreenstl.com or give Mark a call at 314-889-0503 today. Mark Hanna offers securities through Equitable Advisors, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, a broker-dealer. Equitable Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Evergreen Wealth Strategies is not a registered investment advisor and is not owned or operated by Equitable Advisors or Equitable Network. It's the heart of March and everything's green. The bar is as busy as you've ever seen. Everyone's Irish and you are too. When you tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. When the dry cleaner's lost your only green shirt and getting pinched by your friends is starting to hurt. At this point, there's nothing else you can do except I tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. It's St. Patrick's Day, so what do you do? You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do. Hey! Tell them more, do Irish whiskey imported by William Grant and Sons, Inc. 
Biggie's Restaurant and Bar has been a staple of the community for over 30 years and is serving your favorites like a steak sandwich, waffle fries, and so much more. It's not just the food that's rocking. With a full bar and patio, Biggie's is the perfect spot for lunch, dinner, and a little laughter. Biggie's Original Hours are back. Open 11 a.m. till midnight, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and 11 a.m. till 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Check out the full menu at Biggie'sRestaurant.com and stop in today. This is Tim McKernan, and I am here right now with James Carlton of the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency. I made the switch to start working with you, James. It couldn't have been easier to make that switch to start saving money. Well, I appreciate that, Tim, and we appreciate your business. Uh, yeah, this is the time to save money. My, my goodness, we're all feeling it at the grocery store, at the gas pump, etc. So if you've noticed that your insurance rate has gone up, I want to stress how easy it is to get a proposal from us by going online at carltoninsurance.net. Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency online at carltoninsurance.net. Net. I get asked all the time by people, if I'm in an accident, what should I do? And while yes, you should call the police, exchange insurance information, and take pictures of the scene, all those things are important. But the most important thing you need to do is hire a personal injury lawyer. This is Doug Biggs from Longo Biggs Injury Law. And if you've been hurt by someone else's negligence, don't take on the insurance company yourself. Insurance companies have teams of people and a playbook designed to keep you running in circles so they can pay you as little money as possible for your accident claim. If you don't have a lawyer, they know you can't bring your claim to court, and they will never give you full value. We recently took an offer from an insurance company without a lawyer on the case from $12,000 to $200,000. You can't get that kind of result without an attorney on your case. Even if you don't hire us, you need to hire a personal injury attorney. Check us out online at longobigs.com. Want to take on some legends of TMA? Sound the same to someone who gives a damn about the best fans in baseball! Tired of it! This show is so great. Will there be a little speaker system out behind the dumpster so in case you're servicing me, I'll be able to hear my name? Then nominate yourself to be this month's TMA Listener of the Month. And if you win, you'll get recognition and other stuff. Sometimes all you have to do to win the prize is be a female. All it takes one fake girl to just throw this show completely off course. Give us your name, a photo, and other pertinent information at TMASTL.com. The TMA Listener of the Month Club, quenched by Milagro Tequila. Welcome to a brighter side of tequila with Milagro. Find out more at TMASTL.com. Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPN-TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. 105.7 HD2. It's the Brown and Crouppen Morning After. Welcome back to TMA, presented to you by Brown and Crouppen, Tim McKernan, Doug Vaughn, the Plowhawk, Ken Strode, and uh, you know Jackson Burkett. He's in the uh, Horton Watkins studios, and he's preparing his Tuesday half Wide and half. Boulevard, something or other? Yeah, something like that. I, uh, I guess I originally called it a little piddle about Jack and Diane. Uh, Doug, do you see John Cougar Mellencamp walking off stage I didn't uh, this see weekend? It, no. Why did, did anybody that? see that? Uh-oh. No. Nobody did? Uh-huh. I thought that's why you brought it up. Was the concert over? No. I don't know. He's still touring. Yeah, he's playing in St. Louis in September with another older school artist. And I can't recall Willie who Nelson. somebody... Willie Nelson's live, Iggy. I would agree with that. That's somebody about as old school as it gets. It, it is. 314-881-TMA5. Uh, hey guys, the first time I've ever seen Iggy arrive on time, that's from Big Tough, that's not accurate. No, you're not watching. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah, uh, John Cougar Mellencamp, uh, I think you told the story about this happening with Stevie Nicks. Somebody, he was in the middle of kind of telling some stories in between songs, and somebody yelled, Stop talking and play some music! Oh, he left. (laughs) And he, he clearly was not pleased with the gentleman, and he goes, the thing is... You guys don't realize I could just cut the show short and leave. He goes, you know what? I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to play ten fewer songs. And he just starts going into kind of a half-assed version of Jack and Diane, which was what Jackson said today's balloon party, Little Piddles about Jack and Diane. A little piddle about Jack and Diane. There you go. Uh, and then about five seconds into that, he goes, you know what, I'm done. And he just walks off the stage. Oh, and then people start screaming at the guy who screamed at him. And that's when my little TikTok video uh, cut out. Wouldn't well, you I want like some TikTok. of your money back if you cut the concert Yeah, I would think people are going to start bitching about they want their money back. I guess once the concert starts, they don't say, you know, this show will be two hours long. It'll be, no. 
You know, he played and he left. Stevie didn't leave. This the guy got booed. I think the artists need to get a little thicker skin sometimes and not react so much. It's not a comedy club where you're getting heckled. I mean, no. But remember when Miranda Lambert stopped her concert because someone was taking a selfie? Yeah. Did you see the video last week of Madonna? She Uh, she had everybody everybody get up and clap, and somebody in the front row didn't stand up. Rating her. Said, "Why aren't you standing? Why aren't you standing up?" She walked over. The person was in a wheelchair. And what did Madonna say to that? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Hey, yeah. All right. Maybe you shouldn't go after the fans who pay a lot of money to come see you. It should be more like Gaga. Love your fans. Well, I think most of them are. But every now and then, some aren't, and it really sticks out. Yeah, I think uh, when you mentioned John Cougar, I think it's kind of like the outlaw concert. I think Mellencamp, I think Willie Nelson's there. Yeah, a bunch of old people right, are there. Willie Nelson. God, I can't believe Willie Nelson. I mean, he's got to be 90. Close to it. I saw him on the Country Music Awards like three or four years ago, and it looked like he was dead then. I mean, he could barely sing a note. He is... Classic rock. How much? 90. He'll be 91 at the end of April. He shows you, man. Just smoke pot. Well, God bless him for keeping after it. That's insane. 90. A little piddle. Black Jack and and Diane. Say little ditty. little piddle. But is this, is it really world is the real word diddle diddy? I think yeah. so. Uh, diddle. Hey, diddle diddle <laughs> little diddle little diddle diddle, diddle, diddle your skittle by Jack and Piddle. <laughs> That's correct. Two American kids. Didn't he like date Meg Ryan for a while? Doug? I, I don't or was know. Was he married to Meg Ryan? I don't know. I just don't. And then she got all the Botox and he left her. Because of the Botox? Well, she didn't even look like Meg Ryan. But you wouldn't just leave your wife because you got Botox, would you? <laughs> <laughs> God, there'd be a lot of divorces in Ladue. <laughs> Maybe he did. Uh, I don't know if he... I don't think he was ever with... I think he was dating Meg Ryan. <laughs> okay, yeah. He also dated Christy Brinkley. Oh, did he? Is that right? Yep. This guy. A yeah, champion. Just, just be a musician like a John Mayer. He's had a stable full. Yeah. I remember when Tim cut the TMA Live short because I wouldn't let Doug eat a chicken wing out of my butt. That's from oh, former fan page moderator. <laughs> well, Neil you know what? He Craig just got Paquette. himself suspended. Neil Allen Craig Paquette got himself suspended for that remark. Got himself suspended a period of two days' time, and his name, as we speak, is going into the Illinois Recovery Center suspension yeah. log hule. Check on IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com while serving your suspension. Maybe they can get you turned around. <laughs> Illinois Recovery Center, former fan page moderator, Neil Allen, Craig Paquette. That's where you're going to be. Transform your story at Illinois Recovery Center. Illinois Recovery Center, the team believes in the strength of every individual's journey to recovery. Whether you're taking the first step or continuing your path, the IRC's dedicated team is here to support you. Why choose Illinois Recovery Center? Holistic healing approach, expert care and guidance, safe and welcoming environment, tailored programs for lasting recovery and a top-notch facility and accommodations as well. Please call 888-472-9559 or visit IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. Jackson, tell me about Circa. Yeah, happy to, Tim. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas has now made its way to Illinois. So if you live here in St. Louis, Missouri, you just make the short drive across the river. Or if you already live in Illinois, sign up because the Circus Sports app is sports betting the way it should be with big app bets, high betting limits, tight money line splits, and the best customer service around. The big dance gets underway today. First four uh, play today and tomorrow, and then uh, the first round action is oh, going to get tournament. underway. Oh, tournament. Thursday and Friday, where you have wall-to-wall games from start to finish. Well, when you all talk day. about the tournament, you Do talk about hands. James Carlton sponsoring it. Don't Do they they talk, me. talk about the Midwest section. Do the hands while he's doing it. Oh. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> There's a little bounce. It's like a Sibian. Oh, I crack over <laughs> every time he does. You look at the Midwest region. You got Creighton taking on Akron. Akron may be lucky to get in the tournament altogether after the Kent State debacle. How about Baywall? Creighton's got a St. Louis native dog. You know, Ryan Kalkbrenner. He's a real tall drink of water. He's going to be putting in the work. Maybe they'll play oh, Lamont coffee. Paris in the South Carolina Gamecocks in the oh. second round. Whether you like Creighton, whether you like Akron, no matter who you like, you can bet on it with the Circa Sports app. Visit CircaSports.com for more details and get ready to start betting like a pro. Mm. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER or text ILGAMB to 833-234. James Carlton, your one shining moment is going to carltoninsurance.net today to see how much you can save on car, home, 
and life insurance as the tort of it gets underway, Doug, with the first four. Mm -hmm. And then you'll talk about the tort of it more on Thursday. And you need to think about it. Send your emails in for the Design Air Heating and Cooling email today, the morning after at InsideSTL.com. It's Design Air Service. Dot com is where you go to work with Seth Goldcamp. Doug, i got to be honest with you. I got a little spoiled with these temperatures here over the last couple of weeks. They're all over the place. Next and now, I mean, it's not terrible. No highs like in the 40s. But, yeah, it's going to be 67 today, but the Hawk is up. So if you play today yeah. and you enter that score, they might adjust it because the windy conditions... Uh, 57 for a high Wednesday, 52 Thursday. Next week, uh, a week from tomorrow, high of 51. I don't like that. I kind of was hoping for 70s by then, yeah. and even though that's not realistic, I got spoiled. Yeah, we did. This is more normal. This is more normal. And we were told no more winter, and yet it, that's an issue. It's 38 you know. degrees well, now. It's the first day of spring, so technically there is no more winter. There you go. 29 when I got up. Well, it's not winter anymore, it's spring. Winter-like conditions. Oh. Well, I said no more winter, and there was no more winter. And there was. Spring, we had so 20 over. degree temperatures. Yeah, but it got up to 50 that day, so. But it, was, it got down to 20. That's winter. <clears throat> well, I think winter is zero and then high of like 25 <laughs> during the day. Oh, come on. And snow. That's winter. 50 degrees is not winter. That's spring or fall. How about 28 degrees? Well, but it didn't stay that temperature. It well, and the temperature up. never stays in one spot. It moves. And when, when we hit 28, <laughs> I feel like I'm in winter. Designairservice.com. That's where you go. Seth Goldcamp, fourth generation, design air, heating, and cooling. Uh, Doug, not many spring training games left for the Cardinals. Uh, I know you always like to watch a Kyle Gibson start, so today will be a special day for you. Victor Scott is in the starting line. Oh, good. Uh, hey, uh, Phillies uh, closer, Jose uh, Alvarado, did an interview during the Phillies uh, broadcast, and here's what he had to say about how he's feeling. like to hear it. Is that the key for any pitcher, though, though Jose, is make sure your, your legs are strong? <laughs> You know, I am, I am the, the grizzly bear. <laughs> yeah, you are. I am the grizzly bear. I got... <laughs> Sometimes I call, like, to my people in the clubhouse. Bro, I feel like a fat boy. You know, like, I'm f***ing fat. Oh. <laughs> I really clubhouse. like him. Yeah. He's a big old bear of a man. <laughs> mm. He throws so hard. Holy hell. How hard is he throwing? I think he was like. I think he set the record or was league league leader in pitches thrown over 100 miles per hour last year. I, maybe I'm confusing mm. him with someone else, but I'm almost positive. Wow, well, those people explain that to their kid. They're watching the game. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> there, there are no words. Uh, Doug, have you checked uh, the hope meter mm, No. I don't know how the athletic quantifies this, but the hope meter was released. These are ranking the fans' optimism in 2024 for. All three teams. Uh, who do you think has the highest hope meter going into the season? We're talking baseball now? Yeah. Baseball in St. Lou. Uh, I, I guess I don't understand the question. Did you say all three teams? All three teams. All what three, three teams? St. Louis professional teams? Major League Baseball. 30 teams, maybe that was 30 the teams. Confusion. Who has the highest hope of the 30 right. teams? I'd say the Dodgers. No, I'm sorry. Oh. oh, somebody's weeing, and that is brought to you by Schaefer mm. Door Company. When they can, when we can hear the wee, yeah. uh, Schaefer Door Company sponsored the nine o'clock hour, and also we can hear somebody pissing four mm -hmm. feet away from us. Somebody has higher hopes than the Dodgers. That's right, Cardinals. No, this is from their I mean, the city Braves, or from the experts. Right? The no. Braves or Baltimore, Baltimore Orioles. Oh. That was the most mangled. <laughs> the guessing game went so poorly. I know. I just like all right. <laughs> uh, Braves are two. I don't know how they quantify. Jackson, do you know how they quantify this? I think they sent out a survey before. Got it. To see, I, I remember I I submitted my, it was like a two-question survey. Like, oh, are you, you hopeful? Did you answer it? What? Did you answer it? Mm-hmm. I said, I said hopeful. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't put any What's stock. the question here we're trying to answer? Goodness gracious. Is it hopeful? I is it Baltimore? A... Is it Lally? What is it? The I can't question... put a stock into anything that's called hope -a -meter. The question that the athletic asked was, are you optimistic or pessimistic about your team this season? And people... What did you, how did you answer that? Optimistic. This is for each city got this. How do they know no, what their team. Saying, God bless America. The athletic put it on their website. Like, you this pick, is the top This is the guy. worst <laughs> question we've ever had. You pick what team you root for. So I selected St. Louis Cardinals, and then it asked the question, are you hopeful or not? And I okay. said yes. 
And the fans in Baltimore were the most hopeful of any fan group. Baltimore Orioles fans. Gosh, it took a while to get around to that. If you're a fan, aren't everybody hopeful? No. No, no I'm hoping they do well. <laughs> Look across the dais to one Darren Atkins. <laughs> well, you don't think they're going to be good, but you hope they're going to be good. Isn't yeah. that the part of being hopeful? Yeah. Um, I have no emotion. It wasn't do you, th <laughs> it wasn't do you think they're going to be good. It's, are you, it's, they don't call it hope. hope a meter. Everybody hopes their team's going to be well. Yeah. Uh, Doug, the Cardinals are ranked 20th. How about that? 44.1% optimism. Optimist Jack writes, you know Optimist Jack? I don't know him. No, I'm like, dumb and naive. The DeWitts could feel the team of eight-year-olds with socks for gloves, and I'd be convinced we had a shot. Optimist Eric, the revamped roster is good enough to win the division, but probably not good enough to win a playoff series. I wish the front office had acquired another frontline starter to pair with Sonny Gray. Pessimist Andrew writes, they've added innings, but outside of Gray, the quality of those innings in the rotation is subpar. Most fans were clamoring about the pitching deficit last season, and I don't see Gray, Lynn, Gibson as much of an upgrade over Montgomery, Flaherty, and whoever the final rotation spot at any given time. And Pessimist Jordan writes, I'm 49, and the starting rotation is closer in age to me than my 19-year-old son. Uh, a popular topic, Pessimist Tom, our pictures make Gandalf look young. Pessimist Nick, older than Methuselah. Love pessimist Kevin. Isn't Bob Tewksbury available? No. Oh. Like they're not happy on the athletic. No, they're not. Yeah. Wasn't it just a yes or no question? The least hopeful organization's fans this year. Pirates? This makes sense, especially when you consider four of the five teams in the division are going to be competing. The Colorado Rockies. Oh. My God. Yeah, 17%. <laughs> Is that what I'm saying? No. 4.6. 4.6. Oh, geez. It was 1.8%, though, last year. Yeah, so, so they're trending. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be tough to cheer for them. They have no reason to be bad, Colorado. It's a great city. You'd think free agents would like to live in Denver. It's a good sports city. Great Harris Park. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't Great care. Pitchers Park. Well, there's your answer. Yeah. Great pitchers aren't going to want to go there. Yeah. Mike Hampton went there. Schools. Ubaldo Jimenez. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That one solid year, yeah. I think you'd either you'd either want to get ground ball type pitchers or or strikeout pitch. I guess everybody wants that too. But you'd really have to you'd really have to punch that up when they got the pitching staff there. Yeah, Marco Gonzalez pitched there. Mark no, Cardinal. I don't think he did. Mm -hmm. he did. Did he? he no, pitched. he went to Seattle. I thought he went to Colorado first. Is that where he's from? I don't remember. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't was... remember. It's not that big of a deal. No, obviously. it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl Kyle had a couple good years there. I guess you got to strike people out there so they don't hit it. Doug, is this but pornography it, on the fan page? <laughs> I, oh, what is it? Is that Plowsy's picture that he no. put up there? Uh, <laughs> well, it looks like it might be. Yeah, very well might be. It's someone he's topless. I woke up, Jackson. I don't know if you got the notification that posts were pulled overnight. And I go, right? God, what, what happened? <laughs> no, oh, there were God. posts from a couple months ago. Yeah, you see what I'm talking about? Is it the long distance <laughs> cuck relationships? Yeah. Yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Who's topless? A lot of people. Is, still... it, a, is it a girl? The dude got timing. The dude's somebody? topless and they got banned. No, you can't show dude nips. Seems to be some sort of position that they're <laughs> in. Brianna Coppage thing. Oh. They're in the. It's uh, the quarterback's under center. Oh, yeah, I, <laughs> I wish there was like a subfolder for the okay. fan page He'll to where there was like center. an additional page inside the page that you post like things like this. What was the reason to post that? Was there a topic? Doug, why did you post I that? didn't post it. I'm also seeing Kevin Miller with like a whole ice cream cone in his mouth, like dangling from his mouth. <laughs> this thing is another, hot. Yeah, another, Shut it down. Shut it down. Another big day coming. Oh, but the Loomster threw a 300. I uh, yeah, I woke up and uh, I had notifications from face. Here it is, Doug. We removed content in TMA fan page that went against our community standards, and I'm like, oh, oh crap! God. We're gonna shut the thing. <laughs> <up. laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happens overnight? <laughs> but then I, and so I click on the notification and I see a picture of some guy on FaceTime <laughs> watching a guy bang some girl from behind. I'm like, well, that probably. But that wasn't the problem. That's not the one. That wasn't what was the community standard. Which one got taken down? Just I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't oh, show. Let you know. No, it just it, it tells me who did it. Yeah, and sometimes it's from like years ago. Right. 
this was from two months ago, the thing that got... Mm, that, really? That we, yeah, I got the notification from... It took a while to get to it. <laughs> I don't know what the deal with that is. Yeah, I, I now see the notification I got. Yeah. Someone probably reported it, and then somebody... No, it's, I Facebook, think it's Facebook. Facebook got around looking at it? No, it's not. It's not. It's, it's a it's Facebook AI thing. thing. And they make mistakes a lot of times, yes. too. They do a lot of nipple scanning. Oh. <laughs> and so I know, like, some guys, like, will post topless pictures, which are all always... A, Welcome. To we it. all do that. Yeah, well, we're and big fans. And, and there's so. some that get missed. I don't I understand it. Obviously, there's nobody watching it, and I don't report it. It's no big deal. But there's a fake Dillian Harper Facebook page, oh. and all these people think it's real. Oh, I love you, baby. Oh, I said you guys know this isn't her, right? Oh, are you on the page? I think there's a lot of celebrities that have <laughs> fake pages up there with. And <laughs> but but there's a picture somebody Paul posted. Paul's waiting for an answer. They post. What was the question? Are you on the page, like? Yeah, I got, no. on, I got on before I knew it was fake. Because I thought, she. it says Dillian Harper exclusive fan page. I figured, but it's not her. And um, But somebody posted a picture. Well, Dillian Harper, who is fake Dillian Harper, said, Hope you guys are having a great Monday. You like my new outfit. And mm -hmm. it's a picture of her with a dress open. You can see Bush. Oh, no. Are you getting turned on by this? No. And, I, and I said, I know you guys are having fun with this. And you're not Dillian Harper, but you're going to get her banned because you, yeah. you're posting Bush on here. Oh, I was just looking out for Dillian, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, the naughty, naughty you little girl. Saved another porn star. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to save her. Doug, they're not happy with the uh, content. It's truly amazing how this show can go from a truly entertaining and slightly educational segment to a frat house giggle fest in 20 minutes. That's from Starfish Street. Was this your first time listening? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like who we are. Goes. This show is not. Our attention span is only about 15 or 20 <laughs> minutes. It's all we got. We can't think critically for more than 20 minutes or so. Brian Henson says some chronic overposter posted a video that appeared to be a gal weeing in a parking lot. That's from Brian Henson. I don't know if that was on oh. the Colts fan page or on the TMA banned? fan page. Uh, he must be talking about the one that got banned. <laughs> chronic overposter. Yeah, there's a bunch of those on there. How would you know? <laughs> well, I used to be on there, Doug. But you're not. Maybe they you stopped. haven't been for a long yeah, time. Yeah, like probably a year now, right? Well, I'm sure they haven't stopped. Well, Jackson does a hell of a job moderating it. Mm -hmm. Nice uh, going, Jackson. Yeah, I'm really, really doing the Lord's work over here. I mean, Kevin Miller posts. He may, I don't know if he stopped or not, but this guy would, every two seconds he's posting. Of all the worthless ways to spend a lifetime with moderating a fan page, be right up there near the top. <laughs> Especially for free. Yeah. If you're going to pay me to do it, I'd gladly start knocking people Well, if you were to build there. out a pro forma for the fan page, <laughs> one of the issues would be on the revenue column, it'd be a zero. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the expense column, having any number, <laughs> would be something that you wouldn't get a lot of investment support no, I for. I would think so. Yeah. Uh, you can text in 314-881-TMA5. That is how you can text into the program. It's the Jeff Lottman, Compass Realty text inbox, and you can also email in that design, air, heating, and cooling email today. It comes around in about 15, 16 minutes. Then Jackson has this little piddle about Jack and Diane coming yep. up. Yep. That's okay. Right. We'll mm -hmm. look forward to that for mm -hmm. sure. Right. Uh, Jackson, tell people about Mark Hanny's with Evergreen Wealth Strategy. He is. He's uh, my financial advisor. He helps me out. Helps me plan out my financial future. Some great strategies, some great tips. Help build out a custom plan by learning about me, the individual. And that's what he'll do with you as well. He'll learn about you, the individual, you as the client, where you want to be in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So you can plan both short-term and long-term. You can yeah. balance that happiness in life and money because those two goes hand Hand in hand, and Mark Hanna understands that better than anybody, and he is very, very talented at communicating his message to his client. That's why I love working yeah. with him, and that's why I know you will love working with him as well. You need somebody in your corner, and I suggest working with Mark Hanna. 314-889-0503 or go online at evergreenstl.com. That's Mark Hanna. Evergreen Wealth Strategies. Check out Mentality today at LowTUSA.com. That's Mentality at LowTUSA.com. I have been out there. I've gotten tested. It's FDA-approved testosterone treatment. Board-certified physicians who work with most insurance. Even if you've tried testosterone before, not everyone understands the blood chemistry of men's bodies. Mentality can help. The normal range for testosterone is large. And so... 
you got to understand the fact that free testosterone is different than just standard range. So the normal range for testosterone, you can get the doctor to tell you what your normal range is, but then they don't understand the free testosterone. And then if you don't get that tested, it wasn't fully looked at, so you got to get that number, and they can give you that at mentality. Get checked with them at low T. USA.com testosterone therapy helps men regain normal function and restore their ability to perform normally at all levels. It's Mentality Online at LowTUSA.com. What are you scratching over there, Iggy? I spilt a little bit of... Scratch, scratch the gerbil. No, a few drops of uh, Gatorade fell, so I was just wiping it up. We heard it. What do you mean? You heard... Um... We you heard that. We scratch, that, scratch, yeah. the gerbil. I'm not scratching it. My hand is on there. Well, we hear it. Oh, God. Tim, I want this on record real quick, though. Hand me, uh, the, hand me the can real quick, will you? The Aussie, Aussie, Aussie can? can? Yeah, because I want... Uh, Gobble Bowl this year is November 23rd. Long way away. But this is a backflip. I want people to see that. You can see the signature. Okay. Ozzy signed that. When he signed that, for Gobble Bowl, he said, this is the first can of backflip I've signed. Unbelievable. So when you get to Gobble Bowl, you'll be bidding on the oh, first can. Can you put a number one on there? No. A lot of home run by the wizard. It is a nice signature for a can mm -hmm. and a sharpie. Yeah, he, has a, he has a great signature plug. Right. Yes. That, so that'd be you, a hard thing to do. So it's on record when you come to Gobble Bowl. Very first can of backflip Ozzy signed. What do you think it's worth? Mm, whatever they bid on it. Yeah. Doug, that's what we like to call priceless. I see. Yeah. So I said, oh, well... How do we know it's the first can? Go back and watch the podcast from, let's say, the 18th, 19th? 19th, yeah. March 19th, and I told you it was the first can. The day Ozzy was in here, so hmm. there you go. Okay. How about that? All right, that's a nice, nice little item. Real nice. Good little item there. Real nice. Okay, next we'll go to, I'll go to Mentality and beef up on testosterone, get rid of some of this estrogen that's wafting through this dais. <laughs> Uh, Doug, here is uh, Anthony Edwards from last night. Okay, it's about time we got to this. The guy from. Uh, Attempt in that first half, another turnover for Utah. Edwards gets it back and threw it down. And one from the Raptors. It was a sick dunk. Okay. Yeah. Dunk of the year. Well, shouldn't, we, shouldn't this be on TV where we could see it? As yeah, as man, it? It, listen. It was, I, I thought maybe some people had seen it. And so, so he dunked it. Oh, yeah. sick! Yeah, it looked like an offensive foul, but I'm glad it wasn't oh, called. It. I thought you were talking about. The I said I'm glad it wasn't called, but it did look like an mm -hmm. offensive foul. That was big boy game. Guy from Revenge of the Nerds. What was his name Anthony Edwards? I think he was in Top Gun as well. He was Goose. I mean, Goose, this is yeah. Former number one pick, former it, Georgia standout Anthony Edwards. I think Anthony Edwards was the highest paid television actor there for a while. When he, what was the big show that he's on? The big ER. Show? Yeah, ER. Yeah. He had quite a little career, and now he's dunking basketball. I see the guy with the unibrow. You're thinking of Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis. Did he shave that? No. Wally Moon had a nice unibrow. Old-time baseball player. Why just get a razor and go in the middle of that? It's his signature. It's his thing. To each their own. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think I could grow a unibrow. If you had one, would you shave it? Probably would. Yeah. But I can't. I don't have one. I barely got eyebrows. Yeah, me too. Every time I see one scraggling, I take my nose clipper and I do it, but then I think, <laughs> and like half the eyebrow comes off. What was that sound that it makes? <laughs> okay. Mm. Humming group. Mm. Right. Yeah, even if I get one little scraggle, I do it. How can I get like Andy Rooney look at that and say, nah, I like it. Yeah, I don't get why the old men that have eyebrows growing two inches high don't trim <laughs> that or coming out of their ears or something. What? You never look in a mirror? You don't have a wife or somebody to say, what are you doing? Yeah, just get the clippers and get rid of that bush on your eyebrow. Yeah. I don't know. Ah, some people just don't care, I guess. No. no. Looking forward to inevitably seeing the signed can from Ozzy on a Facebook marketplace page near you. That's from glove blogger Tom Draven. That is a serious... Serious charge. Yeah, it is, and it's a very hurtful one, too, because I don't take <laughs> things given to me for charity and go sell them. Glove blogger Tom Traven. How about the Lady Gaga autograph? Well, it wasn't for charity. What was it for? She signed it to me. Oh. I have two things. I have the one she signed with Tony Bennett on the cheek-to-cheek -cheek that's hanging on my wall. Mm -hmm. I don't need two autographs. No. I actually tried to use it for the auction. What did you? 
And everybody who got it gave it back to me. Oh, no. Two years in a row, Brian McKenna wanted it at Gobble Bowl, and he said, I know you want to take it back. God, I can't even give it away. What, do you want a door prize, or did he pay for it? No, it was a raffle. Raffle prize. I guess he could do it again this year. Who knows? And people keep giving the, the prizes back? McKenna did two years in a row. Two years in a row in the raffle. This is the second year I've won this thing. And <laughs> uh -huh. just gave it right back to me again. Uh -huh. so I guess I'll use it next year. Sure. Now, it wasn't given to me for a raffle. It was given to me as she signed it for me. Doug, uh, I don't know if you had a chance to see uh, the uh, lady's five strict rules for her boyfriend that has left people divided. We're a divided nation because of this little article? <laughs> this Taylor Donahue. Okay. Taylor Donahue has 342,000 followers on TikTok, and this video has accumulated 786,000 views. Um, this is uh, her five rules for her boyfriend. Okay. At 23. Okay. So this sounds like this is a relationship a lot of guys would want to be a part mm -hmm. of where you get five. five he had to have already dumped her, right? Think rules. Uh, first thing he cannot do is have a girl best friend. Uh, she says it's super obvious, explain it, because I don't believe in them. I think those get messy. She clarifies it's okay to have acquaintances and friends, but a girl best friend is absolutely not negotiable. That, that's kind of weird. It is kind of weird. Kind of jealous. Uh, next up, she highlighted that it is key that her and her partner have their locations switched on for each other, mostly for safety. The 23-year-old clarified, am I stalking every hour? No, but I feel like it's just one of those things that when you care about someone, you'll tell them their whereabouts. You tell, you'll tell them their whereabouts? I don't feel like that works, but either way. This girl already is just very, uh, untrust, under trust, under trustworthy. Under trustworthy. You think she's she's non trustworthy and she's very paranoid. I gotta know where you are. You can't have a girlfriend. Now, in my case, I actually turned on. We were discussing this last week because I had lost. I can't remember what the hell I lost recently, and I'm like, oh, well, the find the location thing, and I sent it to uh, my wife. So if I were to leave my phone somewhere. And I got this for my keys, too, in part because my two-year-old likes to play with my keys, little tags on it, like people do with their luggage. Mm -hmm, I've got that. Remember that yeah. Lisa Ann was yeah. telling us about those luggage tags? I have some of those. Yeah, so yeah. you'll know where that stuff is. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't, but I mean, it's not like my wife said, hey, I need to know where you are. But uh, in this case, this lady is saying that she has to have her partner turn their location switched on. Yeah, paranoid. Jealous. Yeah. If she's having all these rules as a girlfriend, what's it going to be like if they eventually That's usually married? when things loosen up and the sex increases. <laughs> well, not usually. <laughs> Third of all, she says that her boyfriend is not allowed to go to the strip club, even though some couples, quote, go together. Uh, she states, you can go to bars, you can have a guy's day, but strip clubs, absolutely not. God, I feel like this might be my one and only. This could be. You've got a lot in common with this gal. Uh, also, she said that she wouldn't let her boyfriend pay all the bills, saying it's, quote, wrong for men to pay for 100% of everything. Now she's talking. <laughs> she's winning people back. Mm -hmm. She clarifies that she's talking about dating and not marriage, though, explaining, especially early on, the guy should take on the majority of the bills, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't pay for a dime. So now she says you should take on the majority of the bills? Especially early on, the guy should take on majority of the bills, but I'd be lying if I said, like, I didn't pay for a dime. So she's paying I didn't pay for a dime? Maybe, I don't know. maybe the word four shouldn't have been in there. Uh, it's $10. Uh, this is Lad Bible, which is an English site. <laughs> and then finally, she says that her partner cannot like bikini pictures of other girls on Instagram labeling it a huge red flag for obvious reasons. She says there's a lot more awareness around the problem, but concluded, it always makes me sad when I see someone who's married with kids or just in a relationship and they're liking girls' photos, especially provocative ones. Uh, Doug, there it is. The five rules if you would like to be with Taylor Donahue. Mm. I like the part where she says she's going to pay for some of the bills. <laughs> the others seem a little clingy, a little worrisome. I mean, you got to let a guy be a guy, right? I'm guessing she's not dating. Jackson, is she dating anybody on the Lad Bible? Uh, her boyfriend made a video of his rules for her, oh. which include not flirting with guys at the bar, not liking other guys' Instagram pictures, making sure she texts him while she's out, and then this one I think will get the boys going, and not getting lip filler. Oh! Hmm. I'm supportive of that. So, he has some rules as well.
The liking Instagram pictures thing is odd to me. It's so superficial. Like, who gives a damn? But yeah. maybe I'm off. Or like, oh, dude, but you just come don't on. like them. Like, you can still look at them. On the other end of the foot, come on. You're liking like scantily clad bikini gals. That's just that, that's one step in the road to deception. She didn't say anything about nude pictures, just bikini pictures. Well, there aren't nude pictures on Instagram. I think both of the rules are like both of their sets of rules are pretty obvious. I don't see them being. You have nude. no problem with any of the rules, Plowhawk. I, I don't do anything either. My location <laughs> would be me sitting on my ass. Yeah, that's so, right. say that, so I'm like, oh, unless I leave my phone, like when I'm at a store like or a I, golf I'm, course, it kind of doesn't matter. But I, I mean, at the same time, like I, I know that I'm not up to anything nefarious, so I don't really give a damn. I, turning on my location uh, is is neither here nor there. I see my friends like once a month. You know, I mean, like, no. none of them are female friends. I, I, I don't know. I feel like that's pretty easy. Pretty standard. Location services are so are good, so when you're at home choking your chicken, you can make sure to reach climax before your last walks through the door. Oh. From Jackson's buddy, sweet, sweet Kai. Come on, Jackson. <laughs> I typically choke mine in the living room, and literally we have, like, a camera for, like, checking our dogs during long periods of time. Oh. And, like... Madison, I know, checks it periodically because she likes seeing the dogs, and I guarantee she'll never bring it up to me because she'll be. I guarantee you're an she's exhibitionist. Seen it. <laughs> you stepped on that drop, ass pony. <laughs> I don't. So you're saying Ma Madison watches you masturbate via the dog camera? I'm not sure if she. I mean, she never said she has or hasn't, but it's like right, I'm like literally right in frame. Like it's like. Do you position yourself? Like it almost you looks like star? I would have to be because like it literally has center cut to like the center, of the only nice portion of our couch. It's nice and comfy, mm. typical where I, I rest. So yeah, I, she definitely had to have caught me. Two dogs on the left, dog on the right. Oh, there's that's a, there's also the, the dogs, and there's him that's, eating it. That's the problem. Is there's uh yeah, my dog don't care. Oh, so Greg Golden Stovepipe with a break breaking story. Maybe this is where the cuck thing came from on that uh, that fan page post. It appears my wife has a secret online account. That's from Greg Oden Stovepipe. Wow. Did you guys figure this out? Did he post it? I don't know. <laughs> All I know is that's what the text says. What sort of secret online account? Uh, Greg Oden Stovepipe, calling the Callier and Thompson secret. phone line 636-9004. TM Air, just leave a mic drop for balloon party. Secret would, bank account? I would say we're not like the best at these situations. So I, I, if you're looking for like sage advice, <laughs> so like people to take it seriously, yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, Tim, did your wife turn on her location services? Uh, no, she has not yet. Maybe I should. Maybe I also have found something out too. <laughs> <laughs> Three dogs, one hog. That's from Eric in the Central West End. Is that what, is that what the video you're calling it? I mean, it could easily be called that because the dogs don't move. No. <laughs> they just lay there. <laughs> well, what would you expect them to do? I, I get it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> could you imagine Madison showing some friends at work their foster puppy turns the camera on her fiancé <laughs> has his hog out? That's from oh. Wedding Tackle. I would hope, knowing Madison's street smart, she would... Want to see the camera one v one before? Don't say one v one. Public. <laughs> if not, I don't really care if my apartment. I really don't care who sees it, but it would be a bummer if it was like her boss, mm -hmm. you know, a sure. client. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure where this segment was going, but boy, oh boy, did Plowsy really bring it home with this reveal of the dog cam whack voyeur situation? That's from oh. Gary Pinkle's cell phone. Well, right for there. one, it's not like purposeful. I would just. After a few times doing it, like, I would see, like, the camera blanking. And I'm not for sure what it does, like, when somebody activates it, you know, via the app. You click on the app, and mm -hmm. boom, there it is. So there have been times where it's been blinking green and blinking red. And obviously one of those times somebody's looking or somebody's doing something. I don't know what indicator it is, but... Like I said, I don't care. No. It's not like I'm in a dumpster no, on the side of, like, no. Holly Hills. Like, I, I'm, I'm, Holly Hills is <laughs> a good shot. It's a great neighborhood. <laughs> Solid alleys. Yeah, garage is in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what I grew up with. Yeah. Uh, Larry Nichols on the line, and I forgot to go oh, to him. That's on no. me. It's bad hosting. Larry, sorry, it's going to have to be an abbreviated WWE recap today. That's okay. I'm sorry about that. I know you were on hold. Uh, Doug wants to know what happened because you were trying to watch it last night, but. No, what? I didn't. Oh. I watched The Bachelor. Uh, Doug, you've been watching The Bachelor of like what? The last four decades? I do, yeah. I've watched a lot of Bachelor. Yeah, we're right down to the nitty gritty. We're down to the final two now. Anyway, time out. 
no, final. <laughs> this was the final match between Becky Lynch and Nia Jax. It was contested under last woman standing rules. And they explained those rules to you, Doug. Okay, so if you, you can understand. Explain it, was, it was no pinfall, no submission, and no disqualification. And here's the question you're going to have. What about countouts? Yeah. There you were no countouts, but the referee still had to use his 10 count to see if either Becky Lynch or Nia Jax can get back to their feet. Okay. So, and of course... Becky Lynch won the match. Sick. Okay, so what does that mean for her? WrestleMania. That means that means she can move on from Nia Jax and concentrate on her title match at WrestleMania 40 oh, in Philadelphia. It's a concentration thing. Yes. Okay. So you get a first round bye. Yeah. So you got to okay. gotcha. <laughs> All right. So that was the big that was the big event. Anything else that we need to know about? Uh, besides uh, three qualifying matches for said pay per view for the six pack ladder match for the understood tag titles. Okay. Like these are like Monday qualifiers for WrestleMania. I guess. <laughs> like the play in games? Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be a live <laughs> wrestle. <laughs> oh, I'd be nice. Um, uh, can we call before you do an email of the day, please? Doug? Can you do what now? <laughs> What do you want to talk about? <laughs> oh, yeah, you want to talk. Yeah, okay, go ahead. What do you want to talk about? Uh, wrestling. That's okay. why I call it in. Right, go ahead. The three qualifying matches were DIY, which is Michael Champa and Johnny Gargano. Yeah. Versus the Creed Brothers. DIY won that match, so they're going to WrestleMania. <laughs> the second match was Awesome Truth versus End of Sheer. And Awesome Truth won that match on a fluke. <laughs> on a fluke. <laughs> Not a lot of that happened in wrestling. <laughs> and then the third qualifying match was Alpha Academy versus the New Day, who I happened to interview when you guys were still at 590. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course, the New Day won that match. So those three, matches, those three teams advanced to the six pack ladder match for the Undisputed Tag Titles. Well, that's exciting stuff. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to it until 945, so we're short on time. Larry, do you have uh, the top five countries in the world? Yes, I do, Tim. Thanks for asking. Um. Number five will be Australia. Okay. Number four will be Mexico. All righty, then. Number three will be Brazil. Brazil. Okay, then. Ew. Number two will be Canada. Canada. Of course, number one, United States of America. Yes. That is nice. Larry, Hopefully. God bless you, and uh, God bless you, United States of America. Yeah, God bless America. There Thank you, Nick. See? Big day for NAFTA. Kind of watched the, the movie The Rustler the other night. Never seen it. God, what a depressing movie that is. Yeah, I couldn't even finish it. Mickey Rourke. Yeah, I think he won an Academy Award for that. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to watch Iron Claw with uh, Zac Efron. I forgot what. Good. It, I, good? I don't know what wrestler he got a review. Picks, but it looks yes. really good. Is that the Von Erichs? Yeah, it's quite that, good. Fritz yeah. Von Erich was the master of the Iron Claw. Yes, he was. So I'm <laughs> really going to watch good. that tonight. Yeah. Really good. Wow. Yeah. Was that nominated for anything? No, it got shut out. Um, good year. 2023 was a good year for movies, so mm -hmm. in a down year it would have. A lot of people thought Efron should have been nominated. Did Mickey Rourke win the Academy for that? Jackson or just be nominated? For the wrestler? Yeah. Uh, I think he was just I think he was nominated. nominated. He was definitely nominated. I don't think he won. Uh, 08, that would have been a Slumdog Millionaire year. Jackson has a problem with Slumdog Millionaire. He was pretty good in it, yeah, but it's just kind of so depressing. And Marissa Tomei got topless a few times. Oh, jeez. Mm. Uh, she had pierced nipples, too. Oh, oh, God, I like that. It was a good That's movie bad. film. It was a great uh, wrestler. Yeah. Eh. Not my favorite. Yeah, it's just, uh, it he sounds was like nominated. it might be bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was actually nope. He was uh, he was not nominated. Wow, I thought he was. I thought that was like his comeback movie. Yeah, I kind of thought so too. Yeah, yeah. I would have bet on that he was nominated. Mm -hmm. All right, we got to do the design, air, heating, and cooling email of the day. Oh, can okay. Blueberry he was Pop nominated. Pop keep this run? My bad. He was nominated. He oh, was come nominated. on, Jackson. Movie film. It, it was an 08 movie, but the, obviously the 09 Oscars. My bad. Yeah. Apology has been accepted. Okay. Over poster. 
Sounds like somebody is still mad I dropped and shattered the Brett Hole signed lithograph for Gobble Bowl that I dropped in the station's parking lot the day after I had it framed and glassed. Terrific. Impressive. Marvelous. Tremendous. Inspirational. Magnificent. Just in case you are from Alton, Illinois and don't understand, it's an erostic? Doug? A-R-O-S-T-I-C? A-R-O-S-T-I-C? And I don't even have to say the name they spell. But this email is about St. Patrick's Day <laughs> and the drunken debaucherous sex it sometimes leads to. It was the first time I witnessed anal sex. Looking back, it really wasn't much of a parade. Just my neighbor, Mr. Scullin, and his buddy, Mr. O'Laughlin, a couple of five foot four, 300 pounders yeah. oh. who had pulled in our driveway by mistake. <laughs> They had just made another beer run and cleaned out the bottom two shelves of beverage space at Bob's Liquor on Gravoy. When they tripped, Mr. O'Laughlin ended up on top of the sweaty man ball. Then they just started making out. Okay. <laughs> As Mr. O'Laughlin peeled off Mr. Scullin's cloth bulk bulgers, oh. he yelled, ouchie. The fallen bark from our birch tree had given him a nasty cut on his butt cheeks, so he spun him onto his belly. <laughs> well, we all know my buddy Butchie, and he wasn't going to pass up a chance at a boof train. Okay. Is the FCC? You can't say that. Quick thinking, he poured some iodine on Mr. Scullin's cuts then slid on in as the caboose as Mr. Scullin bucked wildly with okay. a ripple effect of thunderous skin stretching. That's enough! Who was it, Tim? Kareem, and then the la uh, Irish guy, O'Wheat. Kareem O'Wheat. He has been suspended for his comments. He's been suspended a period of two days' time, and his name right now is going to the Illinois Recovery Center. That's IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. Perhaps they can help you. So Mr. Scullin was the was the bottom? Or Mr. O'Laughlin? I, I, I can't. I couldn't keep it straight. And they just fell in a liquor aisle and they started having gay sex? Around a birch tree? That's the most normal name he's ever had. Cream of wheat. <laughs> Good morning. Just checking in. Still TBD on if I'll be able to attend the Ravens Colts draft watch party or if I'll have to... Uh, grin gin, but did the Strode man save me a spot in this golf event y'all have been talking about? I'm no Florida flower, but I am an Indianapolis bush. Thanks. That's from number one Asian intern Brian Henchin. I don't think I could grow a unibrow. Brian Henchin, unable to grow a unibrow. Ed Herman brought up the You're Killing Me Smalls line as an iconic one, line that really defined a movie. Uh, so it got me thinking, what other iconic lines have really defined a film picture? So I went to goodorbad.com, clicked on bad, and landed on the 2008 Tracy Bingham Sherman Helmsley comedy Hanging in Hito, where the synopsis reads, it looks like it looks like me don't have a synopsis for this title yet. Be the first to contribute. Reluctantly, I went to Rival, Rotten Tomatoes. Figured they'd have to have something. Went to critic reviews, and it read, there are no critic reviews for this title. Keep checking for updates. Went down to audience reviews, and it said there are no audience reviews of this no. title because it has not been released yet. Then I just kind of lost interest and fired a hate tweet at the NBC Golf account <laughs> because that's the only way I can climax these days. <laughs> Save me a spot in a fan page club championship. A guy I hate paid for my sound story. I crowdsourced a DNA test. I'm sure the guy that gives a breathy red wine kisses and dry humps greenside of the real estate mogul that for some reason has a gas station hot dog on his lap every day will take care of it. Gin only with tonic, baby. Sean knows I'm good for it. This a rolly, not a pop watch. Ish, don't ever pop. That's from Blueberry Pop Pop. Wow, odd. Blueberry Pop Pop. We flash back to the World Golf Championship event at Doral in 2014 when P. Reed led by two strokes headed into 18 and famously hit five iron off the tee on the 471-yard par 418th hole. 
He bogeyed the hole, but won the tournament by a stroke, leading Mike Francesa to rant and rave. Keep your mouth closed afterwards when you lay up with a five iron. Oh. T shot five iron. <laughs> it's really silly when radio hosts get all bent out of shape about golf. I'm not an angry person. I don't really get upset about things. Well, besides NBC's golf coverage with that Mike Tirico who always has to insert himself <laughs> into the broadcast and make everything about him. I'm Mike P. Reed. I follow rules. Well, besides maintaining my gin handicap for the Fan Page Club Championship, staying off the fairway when it's cart path only, come back from break on time, and staying off my phone while I'm on the air. So, um, yeah, I guess we're done talking about Patrick Reyna, who played Ham in the Sandlot and who also was in Son-in-Law with Polly Shore, Lane Smith, and Tiffany Thiessen. Don't forget about the Big Green, not to be confused with Ladybugs, with Rodney Dangerfield and the delectable Jonathan Brandis. Mm -hmm. Where is Ozzy? Who's going long with him? We know he's here. It better not be the Courtney Show on 106.5 The Arch. Sure, I once hijacked Nikki Glaser while she was here to appear on their show, and I begged her to come in studio, and she did because she thought I was terminally ill and it was some kind of make-a-wish deal. But then I was so nervous, all I could do was butcher her own jokes back to her and confess to all the times I slid into her DMs begging her to be on the show, but I can't hijack other shows' guests anymore since they moved us into this windowless closet next to the pissa. Hmm. Doug, that's some Buck Swope. Buck Swope with a nice little email today. And that's what we have for the Design Air Heating and Cooling email today. Uh, I, I guess this was a Buck Swope day. I'm going to vote for, for Mr. Swope. Uh, it's between Pop Hop and Kevin Miller. And What? <laughs> well, Swope's wasn't that good. I thought it was uh, the best of the bunch. Uh, I go with cream of wheat. I go with cream of wheat Dad as well. Damn it, Lucas! He was I, suspended. I, I, the idea, I can't help but get a get a just a just a just a little soft cow when I think of Mr. O'Laughlin and Doug. Who was the other one? Mr. Scullin? I think so. It doesn't sound Irish. I keep thinking of Skull and Steel. I see the buildings down there. <laughs> and they the had city. gay sex at Bob's Liquor on Gravoy Road, and they're five four three hundred pounds. Gosh, built like basketball. I thought they had sex in his driveway. They got lost on their way somewhere. There was a and they birch stopped tree in, his in there somewhere. And then Butchie joined in. And you voted. Both you <laughs> voted for it. Uncle, yeah. Uncle Butch's friend Skip, I guess, was just watching from the window. I'm disappointed in the two of you. Congratulations, Kareem O'Wheat. You have won the Design Air Heating and Cooling email of the day. And that is a really nice win. Another nice win is going down the hallway and doing Lil Piddles. A little Jack piddle about Jack and Diane. That's oh, what we're doing gosh. on Balloon Party. Uh, they will not be happy about it. We will talk about that, though, from 10 to 11. I have a sound story at 11.30. Doug has one at 12.30. You can get yours at mysoundstory.com. And if you want to be part of the free sound story, life documentary with videos and pictures digitized, and Doug calls it B-rolling. I don't. The interview. Uh, email me at tmckernan at insidestl.com and I will send you the form to apply if you are interested. It's a like five minute form. It's not a 30 page deal. Anyway, time for us to shut it down for the plot for Action Jacks for Ken Thank You Strove. Remember the count for Douglas Elvin Vaughn. I'm Tim McKernan. This has been The Morning After, which is presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Yeah, that plow boy.